here. What a bounce back for the overall market. I was just reading uh, CBOE volatility index, eight week high. Highest it's been in uh, eight weeks. So a little bit of uh, volatility coming back into uh, equity markets. Here is the U.S. dollar through 105.40 uh, early on this morning. We've had a bit of a reversal. But one of those days, once again, this week where we're seeing equities move higher, the dollar move higher, and yields back to the upside right now as well. I'll talk on um, the overall economy, inflation. Uh, so yields back to, I mean, 30 years at 465 currently. What a day, though, for big tech. Um, all of these leading the way and then some. Apple 3% to the upside. Going to revamp the entire Mac lineup around the M4 chip, which is going to be AI-based. So the entire lineup going to get a, a freshening around that uh, M4 uh, lineup to be available end of 2024, early 2025, if you missed that for uh, Apple. Microsoft, Google having a nice day. Netflix there, Amazon as well. Tesla even down here, 1.54%. Uh, to the upside, Broadcom, huge day, 4.5% as far as chips go. That is the big one, 3% for Apple. Came in right about there um, where they were talking about those uh, AI moves on the entire Mac lineup. Um, breaking out of uh, some pretty big levels here on the daily chart for Apple as well. Yeah, if you missed it, I mean, we had a bunch of Fed speakers. Here's a few comments that stood out. Uh, Collins mentioning that uh, short-term inflation expectations uh, now consistent with 2% inflation goal, whatever that means. Um, Fed's policy maybe not restrictive as they once thought. So uh, hinting at the possibility that they uh, may have some more work to do. But the market doesn't care. Straight higher. Um, right out of the gate this morning, I mean, we had a, a bit of a test of the support from yesterday. And then it was straight uh, back to the upside. Hey, look, convenient. We had Apple top of the watch list this morning. Uh, what a day it's been here, guys. Straight higher on this AI news so far. Wow. I mean... You know, yesterday we were like, oh, my God, what are we going to do with ourselves here? The market's down 0.8, you know, um, and now the yeah, market's so up this is 1. Kind of 1.4 right now and still rocking. We really, um, we didn't do very well uh, during the midday because I was like, all right, what about 890 NVIDIA? We got, we got messed up there, but then we had some good trades for sure. We made some money there. Nicely done. I don't know what that is. That's what the market's saying today. Oh, that's from that Jordan show, yeah. It's just like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. We're just going up, apparently. Look, man, this is one of those, the best All the thing. Way up. It's like it's the best thing about the market. But then as, like a, as a trader, like sometimes you can be like, I'm going to follow the trend and I, all this good stuff. Like, man, okay, so first of all, it's the weirdest trading day in a year for myself. Because, I look, I didn't trade Apple, even though this morning when we went over it, both of us were like, oh, yeah, look at the support Apple had if it retests the bottom, fine. But it's actually, it's, it's strange in that momentum actually hasn't been bad. Well, I can be up today. But I look at every single one of the longs that I had this morning. This is Amazon. I guess we're going to get to Amazon. But I was in Amazon for a couple of scalp trades. And then the moment I got out was literally the point that you wanted to get in. And you're thinking, yeah, well, I mean, it's, is it only Amazon? It's actually not. Uh, Google, I was in a scalp trade in Google. And right about when I'm like, this is about to turn really red, I get out. And that was exactly the moment that you should be able to get in. So sometimes the best thing you can do is not get in the way. And unfortunately... Missed a lot of the bull run today. I'm really happy that Apple has found this temporary bottom. All that said, the 50 period is a good $3 away from here. It's a good start, but Amazon, fresh highs, all that other good stuff. Oh, and uh, co according to Copilot, uh, the last time Apple had an intraday 3% move was August 31st of 2020. So it's been a hot minute. Again, I'm trusting, I went on a rant about how not accurate my Google Home has been recently, but um, according to Copilot, I'm going to trust them there. So Apple, 3% day, it's been a hot minute since that's happened. It's, it's incredibly we, impressive. Yeah, this uh, monogram is back open now, up 100% after being invited to the NVIDIA 
some kind of program. Uh, but we are a dollar in the money on AMD. We're two dollars in the money on Coinbase. We'll talk about that. And we're a, bu a buck or so in the money on Nvidia. So um, yeah, Apple's been amazing. I this is the most recent stock. Uh, the most recent stock I bought was Snowflake, but. Um, the most recent big cap tech name I bought was Apple. And you guys all know this. This was weeks ago down here at 169 when we thought it was all cool when we went up to, I told this to Sharif, I was like, yeah, man, the last time I, you know, we did this, it went up to the 178, 177 mark and then fell right back in again. But look at this, man. We take it back all now, two weeks worth of damage being put on the board right now uh, back to the upside for Apple. So let's go, man. Uh, we love this name. It's a, a darling of the Dow, of the NASDAQ, of the S&P 500, and it's been beat up for a minute. So maybe it's time now. Amazon, 52 in all-time highs. Google, 52 in all-time highs. Apple needs to get back over 200 to see that, but that is the next sort of shoe to drop. We had Meta make 52-week highs and all-time highs, I think, a week ago, maybe at the beginning of this week. Um, so yeah, it's time to play catch-up, my guy, and it looks like it's Apple's turn today. All right, let's go on to uh, Amazon. If you miss it, this morning we were discussing this fulfillment. It's a tough word to say. <laughs> uh, fulfillment uh, cost-cutting initiative. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye out for this MGRM. I haven't seen anything yet, but um, I'll let you know if I do. Uh, one, what is that? 190, I guess, uh, gets tagged. Wow, nice day for uh, Amazon today. Yeah, Andy Jassy was on Squawk Box this morning talking up a storm about AI. You'll recall that about a couple of weeks ago, we heard about a two and three quarter billion dollar investment in Anthropic. Uh, they also added a new board member to their uh, board, believe it or not. Uh, Andrew, he, Andrew Nick, I think he used to work for Google as well as Baidu. So uh, experience on both uh, sides of the ocean. Brent. Yeah, uh, I mean, this was earlier, but there was an NVIDIA headline on that guys for uh, MGRM. Yeah, they were in, um, yeah, were, it was. You just uh, had it. It was invited, to, uh, invited uh, to the NVIDIA conference or something. No, not a conference. Well, something. Uh, I didn't hold know. on, hold on. <laughs> no, it's the NVIDIA, some sort of a program. Okay. Uh, here, MGRM, uh, MGRM. So here it is right here. So this is, uh, shout out to Ben Zynga here hooking us up uh, once again with the good stuff. There it is right there, Inception program. Inception program. All right, everyone calm down. I literally have it on my screen as we speak. Everyone said it exactly um, the same So time. here it is right here. Uh, collaboration right near to the NVIDIA Inception program. So uh, I have no idea what that program is and maybe we can go back to the desk and we can uh, figure that out. But MGM and NVIDIA uh, starting to go crazy. So this is MGRM uh, halted, now reopened and still going up that 113%. Did you guys get to the Amazon store yet? We did, okay, we did, good. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, so Amazon again. We really like this name. We had this long, I mean, just another name where we were abs, we had the very lowest, I mean, 185.50, we were long. So there it goes, man. I mean, absolute monster. And look where we got out. We thought we were doing pretty good uh, getting out right there. I guess not. Uh, so the market just continuing to go upside, guys. We're gonna have to address some of these shorts because they ain't working out anymore. Uh, NVIDIA right back to 900. So watch out now, NVIDIA knock, knock, knocking on 900's door one more time. Literally all time highs, it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's uh, medical ro uh, robots. Um, so that MGRM teaming up with NVIDIA um, to develop research and manufacture medical robots are in that space. So yeah, nice deal for them. Anytime you can, I mean, everybody has an AI headline today. Yeah, of course. Uh, anytime you can uh, incorporate that, it's a good thing. Um, all right, yeah, we'll touch on Google. It seems like a bit of a non-event at this point, but uh, this thing's just been straight higher all day long. I mean, we're touching on this, one billion, they're going to run some subsea fiber cables uh, over to Japan which is kind of cool, it's something they've uh, never done before, but um, helping the world get better access to Google. Yeah, and spending a billion dollars in the process, Brendo, so good look there. Uh, they're also gonna be connecting um, Japan, Guam, parts of Hawaii as well. Uh, it's gonna, they're gonna fund the construction uh, of the cable. They're working with uh, companies called KDDI, as well as uh, Arteria Networks, Citadel Pacific, and the Commonwealth of Northern Marina Islands uh, company, Brendo. As you guys were saying, <laughs> here comes all-time highs again. It's a, it's everything but Meta and Microsoft. Well, you already said Apple uh, that are making those highs. 
Intel's, I'm out of Intel at 3750. This morning we shorted 3750 on Intel. I'm gonna get to the Google in a second. And they were right back at that top after it being one of the easier shorts. I am still in a couple that are not on that list. Uh, Rivian and Nikola, both of those are actually weak today. But Google is exactly like Amazon, where it was trending down at the open, I bought the dip, and then all of a sudden it did the lower high and I didn't reload it, and that was exactly the moment where you probably wanted to reload it. So I'll slap a fail on it. There's breaking news about more. Morgan Stanley, though. MS? Yeah, just quickly. They're being probed some sort of... Uh-oh. Um, looked at something about their wealth management system uh, being probed here for Morgan Stanley. So I'm in it, but again, we've, uh, you know, didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I don't know, like, it's just, it's moving around. It's a monster name. A lot of people own Morgan Stanley. It's starting to move around here. I'm just going to play it just for fun right now. Let's see what happens. It is dancing around here again without too much more detail. Obviously, Brendan's probably seeing something now. Uh, but here we go. It's Morgan Stanley, and it's dancing around um, on news about a probe uh, given to you by the Wall Street Journal. Um, that's where the news is. Holy shit. I mean, oh, my God. Uh, this is a nice move down in for Morgan Stanley, guys. We are now a dollar in the money on this. This is why we do this. This is why we're here. We gave this to you two and a half dollars ago. Here we go, it's Morgan Stanley, it's making that move down. I mean, we don't, uh, you know, we wanna give you the good stuff, but we also wanna break this for you. Bye bye, break your neck, Morgan. We're going to the downside right now. Um, this is not the kind of probe that anybody wants, but we are getting to the downside right now on Morgan. Damn, Stanley, let's go. This is what we do. It is a props kind of a day around here as Morgan Stanley getting to the basement there. Screw you, NVIDIA. Oh, man. Yeah, go. Tell yeah, here, here's the headline coming uh, from Dow Jones. Multiple federal regulators are probing Morgan Stanley over how it vets clients who are at risk of laundering money through the bank's sprawling wealth management division. It's probably not a good thing to do. Uh, yeah, it's, it, I've never heard of this before, but it's the Office of the Controller of the Con Currency and Other Treasury Department. Huh. Currency and Other Treasury Department. Anyway, so. um, yeah, that's not a good headline. Uh, yeah, we, we skipped over uh, crypto there. Um, still a nice day for crypto, but uh, pretty uneventful when you think of everything else going on this afternoon. It was a bit zigzaggy today, Brendo. Yeah. It dropped below 70 for a bit, back above 70 now. I mentioned this morning that the, uh, the inflows are way outflowing the outflows. Last week, it was the outflows outweighing the inflows. Uh, switching it up, GBTC reporting uh, bigger than expected inflows here, as you can see, price up. Yeah, I mean, you guys were touching on this uh, during the midday, I heard there. Uh, Coinbase with a nice move yeah. uh, back up to 260 on that positive note, trying to get to day highs right now, too. Yeah, I look, actually, like, I thought there was no chance, I thought there was no chance Coinbase got back to that 260 level when I sat down this morning, but at least there's zero trades until it got in WIC 260. I was in and out. My NVIDIA short looks exactly like my Coinbase short. One time, and then stock is trending up, get out of Dodge, take the money and run. And I'm not, I don't even want to reload it. I feel like this got a little bit squeezish, and the market is continuing to rally higher, and I really don't want to be fighting anything in this market. I want to avoid, if you retest the level, it better be a weak stock, not a strong stock. So I'm, I'm not going to take Coinbase up here again. It's been a good level. If it breaks it out, it could squeeze to 270. And Bitcoin getting back above 70,000 is the other reason. It's different if Bitcoin was failing 70,000, but it came right back and uh, reclaimed it. So BTC having a good day. Although, I mean, the market's having a much better day than, than uh, Bitcoin. Or even, in, in respect, Coinbase as well. A 3% day on Coinbase when the market's up 1.5, I would argue, isn't even that big. And I appreciate you, Kevin Mendoza. I appreciate everybody out there, man. This is what happens. You know, we, again, I, had, I didn't even know the story. We knew it broke. It was against me 50 cents when I gave it to, to everybody. So there it goes into the downside. We say this already, fortune favors something. Uh, and there it is right now. So we go that, the bold, that's it. Um, and there it is right now. It is now $4 in the money and P&L stock number one um, on the show today. And it's not, it's not even close. But uh, P&L number one loser is NVIDIA that just now uh, breaks 900. Um, and that is definitely on the watch now as NVIDIA just smoked me there uh, back up to the upside. And oh, 
Oh, damn, man. Damn, Daniel. What's up with that, DJ? Another because one. there it is again. It's another, another one. one brought to you another by Trader one. TV Live. There's $5 in the money. If you're not supporting, liking, following at Trader TV, Sean, following all of us immediately right now, then you are in the wrong because, I mean, we just dropped this whole story to you. There it is right there. Morgan Stanley, $5 uh, all the way to the downside. And like I said, right there catching not even close in one or two minutes becomes PL Uno on that one. And uh, not too far behind it is of course Coinbase where we nailed this 260. It got all the way down to 255. We're still in a piece of this Coinbase, but you know what? I'm just watching out for this Morgan Stanley, man. I like this. I like this a lot. So just a quick, the position board is correct. Someone in there is like, Neil and Sean still short. What's going on corrected? No, 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 no. not everything is up today. You saw Morgan Stanley's absolutely crushed. That chart looks almost identical to like I mean, a couple of things that are bad. Nickel's down 26%. We're not going to, wow. it's not on the watch list, but Nickel failed $9 or a dollar today. It then rolled over under 88. It's at 75 cents. It's getting absolutely destroyed. Rivian had a bad day as well. So there's some stocks that are weak. Rivian was a flush. It's got a lower high. Not everything is breaking out uh, in the market right now. So like, yeah, you obviously, you're having a day where the market's up a ton, but uh, the rising tide hasn't lifted every single ship. There's always going to be a trade out there. There's always going to be something that hits the wire like a Morgan Stanley out of nowhere. The good news is I sh I, I've shifted all of my, well, I mean, I still own some Morgan Stanley, but I've been buying TD instead. And I say that in a certain voice for a friend of ours. Uh, it doesn't perform all that much better. But um, that's, it's not a probe that you want ever. Like, there are certain things you don't want to hear. Yeah, that's, that's not exactly Ugh. good. Uh, if, no, no, TD, like, no, no, no. That's why I say a distinction without yeah. a difference. Yeah. No, but TD, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say his name, but one of our friends works for TD. Yeah, that's specifically why I don't <laughs> buy. That's exactly the reason why uh, like, I'm right? far away from Right? That. Hey, man. I well, mean, no, no, actually, a good question. Um, uh, Fabian just said something about is, is, the, is the dividend useless? Which dividend? Either one, doesn't matter. No, a dividend. A dividend's not. It's not that it's useless. It depends on like what your time horizon and what your plan is. Because really, if I look at the other things that I own that have dividends, like energy's done better, and that's fine. Like I actually haven't bought a bank in a long time, but I do drip. So then every single time I get the dividend, it goes into the stock. So even though I actually haven't bought a bank stock in quite some time, I'm technically still buying. And then I look at it, it's like, yeah, what's happening with it? But I kind of just leave them alone. But at the same time, this is still bad for them. I'm kind of curious just out of, we'll get to, look man, Coinbase is Coinbase. But if you look at load while we're here, Goldman Sachs, if this chart wants to come to me, like Goldman Sachs, if anything, ooh, that's at the 50 period. So anyways, Goldman Sachs has been trending to the upside and is, is retesting a pretty significant support level as we speak. You look at that, it's like a happy accident. Randomly bring this up because of Morgan Stanley, and it's literally right at previous resistance into support. But um, the, the issue with that is they're all going to be reporting soon. So you kind of you want to see what's under the hood come starting on Friday and then into next week. I think Goldman's probably uh, Tuesday or is it Monday? Goldman? Uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not Friday. Tomorrow. No, it's, it's always early next week. This is why, guys, I just buy... The best of the best. Yeah, next week. I mean, I, I mean, I, the bank, only U.S. bank that I ever bought. I bought Goldman Sachs as well, but J.P. Morgan was was the bigger one for me, and it just continues to go. And that reports tomorrow, so we'll see what happens. I do think that we do get we have we do have a divergent uh, RSI on this one. Someone said that I was ten dollars out of the money on Nvid on Nvidia. Uh, the RSI, yeah, it's up there. It's on. It's on, It's over there on that computer there. Uh, I'm out of Nvidia. Um, we were actually flat on this stock at one point at right here when we had this short and it came all the way back because we had three shorts and then we got a piece out at 896 and then we're like, oh, okay, maybe we fall down. We didn't put a bit at 895. We should have. Uh, but yeah, then we just went short now at 890. I think it was 898.50 or 899 quarters. I'm not sure what our average price was. And then it got taken out at 900. So I'm flat on the positions now, but it is, I already told you, it's P&L number one red. Uh, today for the show. So we'll have uh, one and two, but we won't have, uh, we'll have the biggest loser today as well. So um, not good today for NVIDIA, 1000% and also not good for me on AM, uh, where do we get into crypto? Okay, well, also not good for me on AMD uh, today either. We'll talk about this in a minute, but 
That was a good move down you know, for AMD. Yeah. I was lucky that we were able to get that, actually. AMD's actually fine. It's more, NVIDIA's been the nightmare uh, for me today, but we'll, let's get through this. We still have Google, which was the number one trade idea on the sticky note today, was Google long. All right, let's uh, jump down to Nike here. Just real quick, Chewy going again as well. There was a huge volume spike there. I think it was just 1850, maybe. Some stops getting run at uh, 1850. I didn't see anything new on that, but day highs. Uh, big volume spike there for uh, Chewy once more. Uh, B of A liking Nike this morning. That happened pre-market. Huge spike up to uh, 91. It's been a pretty good day since. Yeah, and they also secured the contract for um, uh, Olympic wear here for the U.S., Canada, China, Kenya, Germany, Uganda, France, Japan, Spain, you name it. Uh, they're going to be making clothing uh, for the athletes as well as um, uh, you know, novelty wear for others. It's going to range between 130 to 160 bucks. So hopefully, um, maybe bump up here for the Paris Olympics. Yeah, I mean, lots to look at today, guys. Was uh, Nike on the radar? You know, like it, it was never. It wasn't on my radar to trade. Like I was probably never going to execute on Nike. Did mention, hey, if you're if you're into it, there was like a breakout setup that I'd say had like mixed result because if you took it at the open. Like 91 and a half would have been the entry. It kind of goes up there like 50 cents in the money, then pulls back and holds 91. So there's like there's every reason that you could have stayed in that, taken some out. It goes against you without actually breaking the even dollar, and then it, now it's trending higher. So there's a chance you could still be in that kind of a break. Uh, nice trend into the upside for Nike, and it seems like it's double bottoming on the daily chart. So it's, it could be the start of something interesting. I mean, the big level to break, I think, would be maybe in here at 95, and if it can do that in the next com coming days and weeks, um, you know, that could be a pretty spicy one. I do believe, let me just double check when they report, because as you're getting into earnings season, you kind of want to, if you're looking at something at a key level like that 95, uh, yeah, they don't report, and look, it'll be a while because they were late March. All right, so, but never mind. They're not reporting anytime soon, which would be more exciting. I did just jump out of a Nicholas. Someone just asked me about, uh, that position, I trailed it to 75, the local bottom. It's now out. I still feel, and we're oddly enough, there's no Tesla on there either. Uh, so when it comes to the when it comes to the EVs, everything. I know the market's up today, but everything about the higher for longer is bad for these guys, right? So Rivian, Tesla, Nikola, and they just keep falling and falling and falling. And I don't think until they get out of the penalty box, Tesla is the best of them. But the rest are going to start to fail. And these guys just got hammered uh, again today. It was a dollar fail break. And once it got a lower high, we jumped into it. Uh, Nike, great. I'm, I, I think if you can get through 95, that looks interesting when I pull up the daily chart. So Google was trade idea number one. Nike was trade idea number two. Just go long. But we, I wasn't sure of the price. We wrote down 89. Um, so it's on there. Google long, Nike long. They're both on there. Uh, bangers. And then AMD's there at 170, 171, which turns out uh, to be a pretty good one as well. But we just took a net position in SMH. Just quickly on Nike here, as we go, we will have Frank coming through today as well. So that should be pretty good uh, on a day like today. We, we look forward to having Frank. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, just off the open. The lowest we got was 90.50. I mean, it's tough to sit in here. The PPI, we sort of saw what that did um, and where the market is right now. If you're thinking long a name and the market only rips all day, pretty much all day anyways, it's going to be hard to get in. But we should have looked at this level of 91 and nailed that, and we didn't. So, so many missed opportunities. 174 Apple, I like, I like it a lot. We do have a nice pushback in for SMH. Let's see if we can get a 226 or so, Phil. Um, we're short. I, just, I didn't want to go back in and short NVIDIA. We're already 40 cents in the money on AMD and been hitting this pretty good. So I want to go back over in. And it might not work out, but we're going to be short SMH basically against that last little high that we just made right there. Uh, you can't see it because I'm covering it up. But SMH, we're, we're, we're well up. It's just I want to try to get short into this 226.50. There's nothing here. It's just that little mark. Uh, that we had just seen. So we'll wait to see about SMH on a little bit of a short here, a risk against the day's high, just to see if there's any pullback. So we're gonna give this thing about 30 or 40 cents and see if we can make that back on this short of SMH. And Morgan Stanley um, is now kind of calmed down a little bit. Our best out is just here at 87.50. It did go down to 86 and then had that wick. Those are what you're looking for on news-based stuff. Um, releases is like these little exhausted wicks there. Um, that gave, you know, a huge bump up. I feel like I would like to short this right here right now again, but let's just hold on and see if we can get anywhere with 
Morgan Stanley. All right. Well, um, we we went we went through the gauntlet there, and we did. We'll yeah, wrap yeah, it up okay. at that uh, this afternoon. Any I mean, any takeaways from today? It's been such an eventful one. Uh, just uh, the fact that you know um, AI really is the catalyst everyone thought it was. I mean, Apple was just dead for so long. We kept waiting and waiting. WWDC, and then people were positing maybe we get something AI related at the earnings call later this month. I, look, I, I guess we're going to have to be on the lookout for more AI catalysts. Uh, Tim Cook nursing his hangover from that uh, <laughs> event last night. But this thing's crazy. Like 174 comes and goes again. I mean, we knew it was coming. It was a matter of when uh, for Apple. So here's some more details on it. An absolute rocket ship. It's almost as if the money's been waiting to come into a stock like that. And then when you get, like, you have to keep in mind that yesterday, I think for a lot of, for a lot of, positions or a lot of stocks or just a lot of people might have represented the kind of day where ah, some people stopped out and gave up and like this is the start of the pullback when you have some kind of a wipeout day on a few names and then when you have that situation what exactly is and there's problem? less people I guess on the offer or less people getting bullish in that moment you can float up really fast because there's less resistance. Like, and then when you get like the shorts squeezing all that good stuff, it just accelerates. So Apple has probably been waiting for a day like this. Usually those biggest moves up are after some kind of like long downturn or a beat up stock. And that's exactly what you have happened here. So I said we get out if Intel took this level. Like, what's, like what was one of the weakest names now up 1%. Like, this is even breaking out, although I'm not going long this stock. I don't think it's out of the doldrums just yet. But it just broke 37.5. That'll leave me with Rivian, which I'll get to in a quick second. And AMD. Like, AMD. Everything is Rivian. And in the middle of the day, one of the things I said was, in the, especially in the lesson, was I got away from NVIDIA and went over to AMD because AMD hadn't taken out a bigger high and NVIDIA had. Whereas, like, I was down on AMD and up on NVIDIA, but then stopped shorting NVIDIA because AMD was the one that was underneath resistance, and, AM and NVIDIA was just blowing everything out. Uh, so just to give you an idea what that looks like, so I had, like, this was a good short in NVIDIA where I was able to capture it at the right spot. But at that moment, it's like, what are you doing here? This is a stronger stock, and it's got no resistance for a while, whereas AMD at least did. Uh, so I was in the last short to VWAP, I actually had this short into VWAP, and then this one here was a tight stop, uh, shorted, tried to hold through VWAP, and I'm not reloading an, another time here. I feel like if it takes out the top, I'm just going to get out of it. And then, we're, and then just about regroup, right? Because I haven't been in the long. Uh, Rivian is just a VWAP short after a, a huge breakdown today. Rivian broke the $10 level. And that was a double bottom. It's a 52-week low. It got to about 950. I covered in front of 950, and then VWAP in here in front of 975, which is short into VWAP on Rivian. So not again, like not everything is ripping faces off, but most things are ripping faces off. It's been a wild, wild. Morgan Stanley. Apparently, that story was circulated before. Um, really? So it goes back to like a November story. So we'll see if this can hold out here or not. Uh, for Morgan. That's apparently why it's getting bumped back up a little bit now. So we'll find out um, if that is the case or not. Morgan Stanley still 250 in the money right now as we go. Um, I know you just talked about AMD, but yeah, it's getting closer to a possible reload level. But I mean, it's just, when I looked at the NASDAQ, we had sort of talked about the range that it was in. We said 18.2 earlier this morning, or sorry, 18,000. We were at 18.2. And the next stop up would have to be a break in and around here. This is basically... This is why the short, this is why I've been losing on the short, like 100%, is that I, th I thought we were potentially going to bounce in and around this area. That didn't happen. Now we're just really going, really on the back of Apple, Amazon, Google. It's like, we said that yesterday. Danielle Shea has just confirmed with me, by the way, she will be on tonight, and I'm going to talk to her about Amazon and some of these moves that are really getting potentially extended here. Um, but yeah. AMD, I wanted to be short against 171. Uh, we wrote it down, 171, 172. So in a day where we're up 2%, I'm actually surprised this isn't up a lot more. Uh, well, we're up 2% here, but the market's up 1.7%. I thought maybe the chip names would be up a heck of a lot more than where we are. And it's true with NVIDIA for sure. Uh, this one just kept on going and going and going and still going and going and going uh, to the top. So I'll short Amazon, AMD. 
I don't have very many shares right now. I'm gonna hold this all the way up to that 171 and take a shot up there. If it gets up there, we'll put on a short and that will be that. If it breaks 171, we're gonna get out of it. No more stubbornness uh, here right now because there's no point. So oh, we'll, we'll, we'll sit here, yep. Actually, I didn't mention, we've, we've talked about a lot of chip names here today, but there was one I traded, which is actually, which is actually my worst stock today. And one of the reasons I'm not reloading AMD is because it wouldn't have been my worst stock if I didn't reload it. And look, you can see what happened to ARM. Thankfully, we had an out at 128. But obviously, if you go long at 128, that's the perfect entry point. So I was short this in front of 128. I had it like 70 cents in the money. I scalped some. I'm like, oh, this is fine. Like the market's going. But then I reloaded on the way back up and it just blew through. But I got out when it broke the 128 level. The only thing you can do, look, you're going to be wrong. It's okay to, I say this a lot, it's okay to be wrong. It's not okay to stay wrong. And that means when, it's, when you're against the trend, have an out, and then when it happens, just try to get away from it. Because if you try to fight something like this, it goes from, okay, well, what's your best stock on the day? Like maybe you, maybe you lose half as much on this as something else or a quarter, something reasonable. Or if you try shorting this to the next resistance level, which I don't know why I have this here at 131.5, it's clearly at 135 even. Let me just get rid of this line live. It shouldn't even be there. Like if you just try it, maybe it turns at some point. But uh, ARM, ARM and its, what, what, the Ford P is 1,500, 15 or 1,600, and 39 times sales doesn't matter when we're going squeezing uh, through the quad. We, um, we're changing, in, we're changing uh, opinions right now. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that I am going to now just start to scalp out because we have NVIDIA again right here. It's a pretty good trade, uh, or sorry, NVIDIA, um, AMD, sorry, against that 170.50. We just got that fill. So right now I am um, scalping this one out. So if it, if it continues to do that, we will um, just let it drop in get some outs here. I do have another bid at 170. Hopefully we can fall back in, but the short was fine and, and we just were patient enough and got it again. Um, so let's do like what we were saying about not continuously reloading into things because like I said, it was my absolute worst trade was that Nvidia over and over reload. It looks like that Morgan Stanley story just continues to sort of um, hold, hold true, I guess. Um, it's from the Wall Street Journal, uh, again, investigating into their wealth department, their wealth management department. Uh, where was it? Right here, Mush and Train Lord following a report indicating the company's wealth arm has been probed by federal regulators. So I think it's probably a good opportunity to buy some Morgan Stanley uh, for the long term because it's down that 4% right now. But again, ahead of potential, I mean, Morgan's not tomorrow. It's right before the, re the report next week. Right, so um, who knows what they're gonna say oh, about that themselves. It's uh, the 16th, so what, uh, today's the 11th. Yeah, let's, you get Goldman on Monday and these guys on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know what, it's always, this, it's actually always the same thing because yeah. Morgan Stanley is always after Goldman Sachs. Well, I shouldn't say always, because I, don't, I actually don't remember when I started trading, which, if that was the order, but I feel like the banks are always in the same order and when it starts on Friday, you get Goldman, you get an idea. And the best thing about it, and probably part of the reason why they always under so much scrutiny, Morgan, is you get to see Goldman's uh, numbers, performance on the trade side, and then Morgan has to follow them every single time. Right. Which is always pretty interesting. I always find, and you get the same thing with the advertising companies with regards to Google and Meta. Like sometimes you always get that early look. You always get Pinterest and Snapchat after you've already gotten Meta, which is cool. Chewy is still breaking out here today. And this is another one that I feel like it was a fail not to look at. Although I, want, I brought it up because I wanted to point out that it's at resistance. 1860 is this wick high uh, on, on Chewy. So it could be possibly running out of, I would say possibly running out of a little bit of steam here. We'll see what happens. The volume is really tapered off, but uh, if you got this one early today, and uh, I know, I know Sh uh, Sharif was at least, they were covering it on the midday and it's still been going up. So at any point, if you were long this, I mean, outside of buying it exactly at noon, I think you would be good. If you bought it at exactly noon, you had to give it a bit of a wide berth. 
I like that. Uh, two fifty six sixty six or so. I'm just gonna put a bid here on Coinbase. We are now three dollars or two fifty in the money on Coinbase. It just bounced off two fifty seven fifty. I'm actually gonna wait right here at two fifty six fifty. That is the two hundred period moving average. I mean, we had this down to two fifty five off of whatever short we have now two sixty. So we had about a four dollar, um, actually about a five dollar winner we had. The fact that it's only $2 in the money now is not making me very happy, but um, that doesn't really matter. We trade what we have in front of us right now. So a potential break higher right there. We could get this out. I'm going to wait for maybe, yeah, you know what? Let's just hold out on this. We are short here a couple things. We're short AMD. We did get a piece out uh, down there again at 20s. So that was a good take. I said I was going to wait for O's. It went down to like 11s or something, and it didn't, didn't go any lower than that. So then I just punched out at 20 when it went back to the upside. Still got a piece on. Absolutely no worries about that. We still wait for the short there. And then in what's been bad, because we short, this is again, too many reloads, but we're in a small piece right now um, of SMH. If this thing gets back down into like the 50s, um, then we'll be good to go, but it still needs to get there. So let's wait to see if we can get down into there for um, SMH back down into the 50s would be nice. So that's what we need to have happen in order for this to turn out to be a decent trade. So that's what we're waiting for right now for SMH. If it breaks above 27, 227, then we will get out of this. We said we like to trade this against uh, rather than trading, you know, some of these um, chip names because we did have good success in SMH yesterday, but it doesn't look like that's um, meaning that we're having success today. So right now we are short at 86, just went into 70s. We're trying to give this at least back into the 50s to see if we can get a fill. So we'll wait for that on SMH. But that's um, and I'm going to make the declaration that if the future is get to 1851, then I'll do the bring Sally up challenge tomorrow. Uh, at some point during the show uh, for push-ups. And I'm only saying that because we're like five points away, so it's going to happen. And I already told Westermeyer that I was going to do it. Because we're supposed to get a new right. we're supposed to get a new Magic 8-Ball when Where I do is this that thing. Magic eight ball? Oh, oh I, just, <laughs> I just picked it up when, when I said it. Uh, because this one is, it's dated. Like, it basically has a bunch of stuff that's A, not relevant. Well, actually, no, just a bunch of stuff that's not relevant, so it's not as much fun. And appreciate you. I told him it was tomorrow so he can make sure he tunes in. And for anyone that doesn't know it, you can look it up. I probably will not complete it the way Sharif did. But hopefully we can do have a little bit of fun with it. I want to get to Shopify because a couple people asked about this stock. And I just noticed this lit grad to 70 today, which is... We always like these kind of things for reversals. It's actually at support, 70, Money. and then lit grab underneath. It's holding 72, so there's your liquidity grab, holding the 70 level, and now consolidating higher. This looks pretty bullish to me, and you can go for this little flag or whatever pattern. It doesn't really matter. It's something bullish, higher lows and all that good stuff. Uh, so 71, 75 looks pretty good on Shopify. It just went green on the day, so I'd rather be picking it up into 7175 where I'd have a bit of an out. So it's a new one, but I like the setup. It's good on the higher time frame for lit grab grabbing that bottom, holding a key level, and now you're getting a higher low pattern as well. So I'm gonna jump in here if I can get some 72s. I'm just about 25 cents, and then to the high of the day is about 40 pennies up here. So let's see if Shopify can go, 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 go. I know it's in a downward turn, but I like that reversal candle it's putting in. Doing anything but shorting chip names, I think, is going to be, or going long, NVIDIA, I think, is going to be wrong uh, right now. We just gave a little bit back because Coinbase made that move back. Like, since we started talking about it, it's like five straight upside now. Um, AMD, thankfully, this name's still going down. It's like, duh, we should just be, like, really focused on this. Not SMH, nothing else except for AMD, as the shorts have actually worked for us. You know, like, come on, man. So there it is. We just got 11s out. Like, we just shorted 50s. Like, that's, like, 40, it's still 40 cents. It's 40 cents, you know? So we'll take that. But then, like, we, we're giving it back, shorting, watching out for this SMH to do its damn dance because NVIDIA, which is the largest holding in that thing, just keeps on chugging higher. So I sort of thought that if NVIDIA pulled back a little bit, it would be tough for me to catch the top here because I've been trying over and over and over again and never been successful. So I just was like, okay, maybe SMH uh, would give us a little bit of love uh, on that. But as this keeps going higher, so does the SMH. Now that I see this, um, I'm going to give this to 227.10 uh, because, only because, not because I'm being more stubborn, but because as this goes, 
like if Nvidia needs to, which it probably will immediately, uh, take this level here, um, that's, that's the key, right? So if Nvidia takes out um, 902, then that should really rally um, the SMH, right? So that's what we're gonna look for, see if that takes, does take effect. But for right now, um, looks like we're gonna get stopped out on the SMH as it takes out 227.10 and um, NVIDIA looking to do the same thing. So there it is right there. We will slap a fail on our last piece here because that is what it is. We're getting stopped out on the SMH. We tried, that was, where were we just short at? Uh, 87s there, out 25 cents, hit. Oh, it, this market, it's wild. Tesla just got to 175. Um, it just realized that we went the entire rundown and got to 240, five minutes before Frank, and we didn't actually mention Tesla, because I, I think oh, I talked Tesla's about, been good. I talked about all the other ones and not Tesla. So the good thing, and again, this is the best I can tell you on a day where there was a hot moment and and it was right at the time because all the shorts were good and they were profitable. You had to get away from them. But wow, underneath that 170 on Tesla looked like it was going to be a fall apart kind of day. It was a short it, scalp it, and then the gap fill looked like 165 could come in, at least a 167. But instead, it just broke it out. And the thing about this, like, yeah, of course, it's easy in hindsight to look at that reversal. But you have to remember, how many times has a consolidation underneath that been another stair step down? And that's, you know, it's showing you, it's showing you reversal at the open, and then it's a stair step down, and then it plunges for the rest of the day. So you have to just trade the setup, and sometimes it's going to look like that, and the best you can do is get out. And other times, you're going to be reloading, 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 and scalping, and all you're going to be doing is working into a, a quality short. I just, feel, I just feel as if just because it, does, it doesn't work in terms of giving you the move that you want, you still have to trade the setup uh, that's there for you. And when something does a fail break of the high and then a lower high, I'm going to want to short it. Because like I said, sometimes it looks like this on Tesla and other times it looks like that on Nikola. And if Tesla has made its turn, then I will be one of the many people that were waiting for it to be at like $150 um, to be looking for another ad. Like actually, I joked in the, in the midday show, uh, on the train home, I'll probably be taking some, uh, canceling some stink bids in my personal account and maybe moving them <laughs> to somewhere else. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if I'd actually go that far, but it certainly feels like that. Like I was completely convinced Tesla was going to 150 bucks and if, it, if the next thing that happens is it breaks 180 on the daily here, it, there's, it, could, it could be 200. There's a lot of pent up anger in Tesla I do feel like. So a couple of minutes until Frank comes. I don't even know, like we joke about the Frank rally. Good luck, with, like really? <laughs> We're already up, so he has no work to do at this particular moment. And I, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what he has to say about the PPI because I don't know how much we've talked about the number. Yesterday, you get bad numbers and the market decides to hold the bottoms yeah, and know. gap up. And then today you get slightly good. I mean, not as good as it was bad, right? Like PPI was not nearly as good as CPI was bad and the market rips faces off. So what does that tell you? We're in a bull market. Uh, yeah, for, for a minute, for sure. Um, we've been in a bull, bull market for a while, I feel like. Um, all right, so I was watched, so first of all, bye-bye AMD. I don't have any bids on this one. Let's see how, how low this one wants to go. We did get back into SMH there pretty stupidly, probably. Uh, we just got some 94s uh, back out there, so we got stopped, we got back in, and the reason why, again, I just saw NVIDIA make a march to 900. So I was just thinking, ah, now the SMH is gonna go back up. I was thinking if this breaks 900, um, you know, maybe we lose some more of these names. So we're 50 cents in the money right now on AMD. Let's go uh, for AMD. Maybe this one will. Uh, what is that, the 50 period? Let's not be, um, like I said, if we've got our scalp zone on uh, right now, then we are not um, going to not do that and scalp this out. We just got into the 50 period moving average. You know, this is why we're here, man. We scalp. We are a scalping trader. That's why I have the 50 period up. So I have to appreciate that and try to get something out down there. I'm bidding 169.94. It is. Uh, why did I just, why, I mean, I put it exactly at 94. Okay, uh, let's just see if it stays there and we'll wait for that uh, to hopefully come through and hit. Morgan Stanley getting worse, it seems like. I don't know. It just broke through 87, but then stopped at 86.70. So let's see what happens here with Morgan Stanley as that keeps coming down. Now down 
So it was down four, now down five. Let's see what happens here with MS. SMH, we've got a decent position on. I might take another piece right here at 96, just in the fact that we're going to look to scalp it out again. Um, AMD is hitting. Did we get it? Did we get it? Yes, we did. So let's go bang on that one. So again, we said let's focus on the shorts of AMD and AMD only. So we did get back into the SMH, so we did break that rule. But for right now, Looks like we're gonna be okay here as SMH comes back in, AMD's coming back in, and we will wait to see now about Coinbase. So Morgan now tanking actually, now down into pretty much its low of the day again, Yikes. into $86. Morgan Stanley a $4 what's winner. That, what's that bid on the, on the daily there? 80. Oh, into here, like yeah, like no, 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 the pounds. bottom, the bottom, bottom. Oh, right. all the way down here, yeah, eighty threes, eighty fours. So well, I would, I would look out for that for maybe some kind of like it's clearly support on the daily chart. It is time. Yeah, Let's see what now? happens mm -hmm. when we're already up one point seven percent, and then we go to Frank. Yeah, dangerous. There he is. Yeah, a lot to discuss here. Busy week, busy uh, afternoon even here, Frank, as we get uh, a nice recovery for equities today, coming off this PPI number this morning which, I mean, was kind of, you know, where it was expected to be more or less, but a stark difference from what we had yesterday in CPI. I mean, I, I see this, this note you've brought here, highest since September of 2023. How much of a problem are we talking about here? Well, it's, it's really interesting. You know, we, we talked about this uh, two days ago, and I think you nailed it with your line of questioning um, which was, yeah, what will actually uh, move the needle here? And I, my retort was, well, if you're talking about stocks, it might take a lot um, because we saw a, a, a needle moving number here, but now we're seeing stocks come all the way back. And I, I think partially maybe it's the PPI, but I think it's, it's also what we talked about on Tuesday, uh, Brendan, which is Yes, of course, inflation upticking and getting back uh, to three and a half percent versus what was expected, 3.4 percent. Core inflation was expected at 3.7 percent, comes in at 3.8 percent. Inflation higher across the board uh, yesterday. Um, th that's not necessarily a great thing. Um, but when it comes to the stock market, it is a little bit of a, and, and I heard the guys reference, we're in a, a bull market. And I think a big part of that is that the stock market's in the best of both worlds right now, where if we get inflation and GDP and employment printing lower, it's like, okay, well, we got the rate cuts coming then. And if you have the strong employment and the strong GDP and the strong inflation that we've gotten month after month here in 2024, and you see the inflation has been upticking, but employment has been outperforming you know, two or threefold on those data releases, and GDP has been outperforming by at least a couple tenths of a percentage point for the last few quarters here. We'll take the 3.5% inflation if you're the stock market. Now, the fallout in interest rates in Forex has absolutely stuck around. That's one that did not necessarily reverse course totally uh, here today, unless, I mean, there's obviously been a lot of action in the last hour or so, um, but 10-year yields got way above four and a half percent and they've stuck around there um and the the environment for the fed moving forward has uh likewise shifted as interest rates in general moving higher we saw i, I believe it was a 25 basis point move in the two year alone yesterday which is unbelievable i mean i don't know the last time i, I treasuries were the first product that i traded at the chicago board of trade here um and the last time that I saw a 10-year move that was more than a point was at least a couple of months here, which isn't to say it's you know the most rare thing of all time, but it's really akin to like a three or or four percent down day in the S and P, and that's what we got yesterday in interest rates. Um, and it wasn't. Everybody always thinks, uh, Brendan, it's going to be the Fed day that really moves markets, um, and, and it's usually these data releases that kind of uh, move the Fed even before they commit the action, if that makes any sense. I, I, I know you know this, that the, the FOMC days over the last couple of years usually end up being less eventful than you think they are. But these data releases like yesterday's CPI really come out of nowhere. And yeah, this was the biggest day that I've seen 
for single day tr treasury price action um, in at least a handful of weeks, if not months, uh, and same for Forex and, and across the board. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know what you take out of uh, all of this, but now that we're 24 hours away uh, from this higher than expected inflation, interest rates, Forex, taking note for sure. But I mean, if you're looking at stocks uh, or some of the commodity markets, um, they're still in this best of both worlds kind of environment. Uh, and, and I feel like that will be the case unless we get four or five or 6% inflation. Uh, and, and honestly, man, I've talked about it with guys over here. If the Fed were to hold interest rates for the rest of the year and potentially have to cut at some point this year, or, or sorry, hike at some point this year or next, the U.S. that has to be because the U.S. economy is is doing so well, right? Like it, it, it's one of these uh, great scenarios right now uh, for the stock market, and that's why you're seeing all time highs uh, month after month, whereby bad data, okay, we'll get the cuts. Good data, well, that's some good data. And so even if they have to get to you know closer to six percent with the overnight rate, I know. I don't necessarily, a lot of people don't want to hear that. I don't know if that's what brings this uh, stock market lower. It's um, in, in a lot of ways, the stock market is bringing inflation and interest rates higher, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, what's their hurry across the board? There isn't one at this point, you know, as, as long as the economy is performing, jobs are there for anyone really who wants one, why would they need to um, be in a hurry to cut? I was just double checking here. So um, April, May, uh, the meeting is going to be the 30th and then the 1st. But the June one, I want to touch on here now because uh, this is basically off the table entirely, um, it would appear, as far as the Fed funds tool is concerned. I mean, I heard some Fed members yesterday and then again today kind of re reiterating the fact that maybe Q4, maybe? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I mean... It's crazy in one sense, but also, I mean, I, 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 every once, every once in a while, maybe once every couple of years, uh, I'm right about something. And I'm not, it's not even necessarily that I'm right, but you and I, I feel like have been talking about this since December of 2023, when they priced in all of these rate cuts, they priced in, I'll, I'll never forget you and I sat there and we were looking at the, one of the fed watch curves and yeah, we can throw up the one for June. Um, if we've got it. Um, and we were looking at the curve for December of this year, and it was six to seven rate uh, cuts. I'll never forget seeing that and you and I jumping on and being like, you know, six to seven cuts is a lot of cuts. They only have, I, I believe it's uh, 10 meetings every year. And so that's, you know, a cut more than half of those meetings. Um, and coming on with you twice a week, we check these numbers and we've watched them price it out of March, price it out of uh, of, of uh, April, price it out of uh, of May, price it out of June, and it, it just continues to be the trend. And so, one, in one sense, it looks crazy, right? Because now the odds of a of a, a June rate it should be cut. Sorry, I, I got my hikes on my mind, obviously, because everything is shifting so quickly. But the chances of a of a June rate cut now are twenty one percent. It was just a week ago that it was a 60% more likely than not that they're going to cut in June. A couple of weeks ago, it was 80%. You and I were looking at this, it was 80%. And now it's 80% chance that there's no cut by the June meeting. And, and uh, we also have the end of year, which again, I, I only toot my own horn because I can only do it once in every while. But we looked exactly at the odds of no rate cuts for the entirety of this year. Um, and it was 0% a month ago. Last week, it was 1% or 2%. I jumped on and I was like, man, this is something, it's at least growing. Futures traders are starting to price in the odds of no rate cuts at all in 2024. And now it's up to 12.5%, which is absolutely not nothing. And to your point, you've got central bankers that are now punting to Q4. And uh, I mean, at, at that point, if inflation isn't in the two handle by Q4 and employment and, and GDP and earnings and everything is looking strong, I, I could definitely see a scenario where they punt this thing to 
2025. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing is the stock market, I, I don't know if they care so much about this. The US dollar market definitely cares about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, what's, what say you about these shifting odds? Yeah, and I think it's worth mentioning, you know, one of the, one of the reasons, I think, anyways, that um, they had earmarked June coming out of March was that will be the next time we get these economic projections from the Fed as well. And yes, yet another refreshed dot plot from yeah. uh, the Fed members. So I think that was kind of the stepping stone every other meeting or, or, or so for June. But no, I agree. I, I think as long as, as, as we said, you know, the economy is doing well and there's jobs for everyone, why would they cut? And, and as you said, the stock market has made the choice already and, and you know, finalized that decision that if it's Q4 of this year or Q4 of next year, and you and I talked about this um, back on Tuesday, it doesn't care. It's, you know, all is well. Um, you mentioned the dollar here. Highest level since 1990 versus the yen? Unbelievable price action in this uh, dollar. And yeah, I mean, if you were uh, in the U.S. getting paid in U.S. dollars and we're ever thinking about getting over to Japan, now is the time. I believe it's since July of 1990. And you can see all this data here from uh, IG going back to uh, the early 90s there. It was really a blip up there to the, I think the highs were right in the, the 155 to 160 range. We blew out 153 in the last uh, uh, 24 hours of trading here. And so that's to say a couple hundred pips from highs that I have data for going back more than you know 30 to 35 years here um, for this dollar relative to the yen. And of course, I, I know you know this, uh, uh, Brennan, not necessarily... 30 plus year highs for dollar in terms of the euro or the pound, but heading in that direction. I mean, we're, we're right now at 125 with the pound, with the euro, we're back right around 107, which has been uh, the low for the last several months. And the, and the low for the pound has been 125 for the last several months. And this is getting in that territory of, is parity in play for the euro again? Is that trip down to 115, 110, and even uh, it was one day that the, the pound got down to 105 against the dollar, uh, I believe it was uh, two years ago at the peak of inflation fears, is that back in play? And, and this is something that, you know, I, um, I mean, I, I love to see as someone who was thinking about going uh, from the US to Japan, but I, I love to see examples like this, Brennan, because Everybody going into this year, when everybody's on the same side of a trade, you know it's going to end up differently. And everybody going into this year was like, well, the U.S. led the way on the way up. And so now, of course, they're going to lead the way on the way down. We're pricing in six to seven cuts this year. The U.S. dollar is going to come all the way back. Um, and it's not necessarily, oh, I'm I'm big patriot. I I love the the U.S. and this U.S. dollar, and of course, I think it's the strongest. It's more of you know, as a trader, whenever you think you know what's going to happen, it's absolutely not going to happen that way. And and I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some of these U.S. dollar extremes that we've seen in recent years that we saw on the way up, even on the way down, because this is always a game of relativity. Even if the U.S. does cut once or twice this year, if the Euro area or the UK cut four times or five times this year, that's US strength and that's US dollar strength. Um, and so, I mean, we haven't had a lot of volatility in the interest rate and Forex markets for the last uh, handful of months. Like I said, everybody was on this, like, we know the cuts are coming, everybody's cutting globally. And so there's just some kind of shifting of expectations. But now um, with this inflation data that continues to stay strong and all the other data that continues to stay strong in the US, um, it, it really brings in a new unknown, which is, are we gonna get these cuts at all? And that's a huge shakeup for all of these asset classes. It just uh, doesn't seem like it's enough to shake uh, the S&P 500. Uh, or this, go obvi obviously gold is going crazy for a, a number of different reasons. Um, but for interest rates and Forex, uh, unbelievable uh, time to be uh, trading around those markets. I thought it was just going to be on the way up, Brendan. I thought it was just going to be uh, on the hike side, but on the cut side, 
some more volatility. Yeah, you. extreme as well. I was just looking at the Canadian dollar uh, versus the USD here. You got to go back to um, November of last year uh, for these levels that are coming into play here for the uh, CAD as well. So yeah, uh, multi-month, if not multi-year right across the board. I mean, it's, it's one of those months, and I want to just to wrap up quickly here, uh, get your take on this. It's one of those months where, you know, CPI is now behind us. We get non-farm behind us. And then the Fed meeting doesn't fall until the end of the month. So we have a couple of weeks here, two and a half weeks or so before we hear from uh, Fed Chair Powell at the next FOMC meeting. Typically, in the past anyways, when this has happened, it's created a little bit of uncertainty and a little bit of back and forth as far as not yeah. only interest rates are concerned, but uh, Forex markets and equity markets as well. Am I imagining that or is that a pattern that you've seen? You've seen this, uh, you're seeing it 100% clearly. We've seen the big data point, whether it was a non-farm or an inflation, and then like, yeah, a little bit of a quiet period until the next Fed. Um, and usually in that time, they've kind of reversed that move. Now, that being said, this has been the big, like I say, it's, it's, it's no coincidence, I keep saying, this is one of the biggest interest rate Forex moves that we've seen in months. Uh, and so this is one where they could try to hit some push through some of those extremes, continuing in that direction. But yeah, you're, you're exactly right. The first three months of the year, we've seen the big move off of a data point, and then like a slight reversal leading up to that Fed meeting. Um, we'll see what happens this time. But um, yeah, not so much news until this next uh, meeting here. But uh, I mean, the extremes that we're seeing in the dollar market, in the gold market, stocks getting back to those all-time highs um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some wackiness the next couple of weeks. Uh, we glanced by it there real quick, but I mean, PPI this morning, it's, it's never really a huge deal, but in line with expectations, I mean, to be expected. Yeah, yeah, I, not, not really much to me. You saw the knee-jerk reaction, but what you, you saw the big move come throughout today. And I, I think it's, that was really the settling in of yesterday's number uh, and what it, it could mean moving forward. And, and like we've been talking about for this, if you're just looking at stocks, what it could mean is not necessarily direct negative correlation. Um, but yeah, the, the PPI, it's been so close to zero throughout all of this mess that being up or down by 0.1%, not as meaningful as being up or down by 0.1% in that CPI. Uh, never, It was never going to be a straight line to uh, their target. And uh, here we are. With a little bump in the road so far, we'll see how it plays out, though. Great stuff. Frank Caberna, Director of Strategy over at IG.com in Chicago. Uh, speak again next week. Thanks, Brennan. Well, Frank, it was never going to be a straight line to that target. What? And here I actually <laughs> thought it was just going to be like the Fed, uh, because, you know, when you, when you predict inflation is going to be... The God plot would actually hold. No, but it goes exactly how they want inflation, right? Like, they saw that one coming, and then, you know, their plan of action the to Fed is always it, exactly right, pretty exactly. much. Their timing is always dead on. I mean, it's just, you know, you can, you set, know. Your, you can set your watch. They're not they're setting the housing, fire on, uh, the, uh, the housing market on fire while it's already on fire. They're not doing that. No, of course not. Back in the day. Oh, of course not. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you, Frank, because Frank created some diamond hand action for us uh, right there. We are still showing short three dollars in the money now on coinbase we left you with definitive 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 we said we're shorting amd and there it goes we still have a piece on that one and that goes down to the downside and that, guess what else has happened we've just made back like a lot a lot uh here so so far so good look what's happening now to the smh as well as that's starting to pull back down in there so yeah man uh so far so good here on a couple good reloads there uh happening for us on the chip names short side so all good there I'm debating just, I mean, it's 303. Uh, Bitcoin's fine. Coinbase did break. We were sitting here. We didn't want to get out there. I'm thinking lower, but at the same time, we want to try to respect the 50 period moving average. So that's at 258.50. You know, that'll be about a $2 winner if it gets back up there. My stop on this trade is 250, 260.51. So when we went short up here on Coinbase, my stop on this last entry was 30 cents higher. So we had to average in, none of our outs are anywhere, you know, so the average in still remains legit. Uh, all to the downside, it's a big stock for us, it's Coinbase. 
Um, you know, thinking about getting it out now, we're just around that 200 period and just bounced again off the fifth off of uh, 257. So, I guess we'll I guess we'll give back a little bit here if we take this out. 258.25. I'm gonna cancel that stop on Coinbase and put this one in. This happens to me all the time, but you know what? All right, fine. 31s. We, this happens to me all the time where it's like, okay, and then I look back and I'm like, why did I get out there? Why didn't I just wait? But whatever. Um, like I said, we've done really well to hold some of these shorts back in. So let's just, you know, take it for what it's worth. Get out if that does happen. It'll still be like a $2 winner. So all good. But we could have had $3. So let's wait to see if that does pan out for us eventually. The thing about a hold, and you always have to remember, I don't know, we say this all the time. Like when you're holding past like the initial move, you scalp some out. Like if you have, if it was a target that's like far away, like sometimes it's just all you can do is trail it. And once you're, once you're at that point in the trade, it kind of is what it is. It either gets to the level where you're like, okay, I'll, I'll get it out here on the way back in, whether your trail is um, a percent that it pulls back or a key price level. But if you're just sitting in it, you're sitting in it and waiting for something to happen. It took all day long, but finally, um, I did, we, CarMax was on our watch list and I said, well, I kind of like Carvana, because it had this $81 level that was support. I'm like, if it gets up there, I'd look for the fade at 81. And then Carvana, I mean, everything was, it was $77, it got up to 80, and then flushed back down. I'm like, okay, well, we're probably not gonna trade Carvana today because it just went, didn't get the last dollar for the short and fell four bucks. What are the odds it's actually gonna bounce from there? Well, apparently on a day like today, it does. So it just wicked the top, went to 81.5, so waited for it to get up that price consolidate lower and now sitting in this one short looking for out in front of 80 if you see VWAP that's something pretty extreme but uh, yeah with 50 minutes to go in this market the Nasdaq still wants some of this hot fire apparently but it's not a wrapper um, Apple 74 it's lower highs in Apple so the thing to watch here is if we take out the top on the Nasdaq like what isn't taking out the highs and I'm seeing Apple trying not to. Microsoft would be an example of something which is, you know, with the market taking out those highs. NVIDIA is, oh, never mind. Back up. Yeah. See, I do that, and it's like, well, when I started the thought, NVIDIA was, was underneath 900. And then when I finished the thought, NVIDIA is actually back above 900. But you see what I'm getting at. If the market takes a fresh high, show me something that doesn't break the top. And then if the market gets back underneath that high to where we're consolidating, then the things making the lower highs are the ones you want to short. I hope, like that makes sense, I hope, yeah. for everybody. Like if, it's, if something is taking out the top of the market, don't fight that. Fight the thing that's not making uh, fresh highs. Oh yeah, Rivian, I did. Rivian was like kind of the first thing at VWAP we got just after we came back on. It just got to 950. The next thing is 940. And I mentioned this to Randy, although you were here. We talked about Rivian. Oh, no, not Randy. No, Rivian got smoked today, and then Randy went on to... It was actually a pretty positive discussion about uh, Rivian getting some local and municipal fleets potentially and oh, taking right, that right. business. And it was the kind of speech, I'm telling you right now, it was like, hey man, maybe I should be buying Rivian stock if the end of it was so convincing. The answer is no, I'm not going to, but because I already own some and it stinks. But Lucid could be the next shoe to drop. So there's $2.52. There's like 255. It's at 255 right now, so you know where I'm going with this. If Lucid breaks 250, that looks like a flat bottom break to me. It worked on Rivian, so why wouldn't it work on Lucid? Maybe it's today. But then when I said this the first time about Rivian, it didn't break for a couple of weeks. So today could be the day. It's five cents away here on Lucid, down three and a half percent. All of these bad boys are in trouble, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's one of them that's making money. Check, check that. I mean, BYD makes money. Uh, there's one of these in the U.S. that makes money. That's a U.S. company, and that's Tesla. And even they have been under pressure. The rest of them have yet to find a bottom, so they're short until they are not. Uh, that's pretty easy to see. Top VoIP just said NVIDIA at 920 tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I Probably not going to be wrong. You know, the, the thing is... Yeah, like you bounced almost off to 50 period. Like why, if the, everyone was waiting for it to get back into the support, which held almost on a dime at 840, around the 840 level, then why wouldn't you retest the highs? Every time NVIDIA's done this pattern, where it kind of holds a consolidation, pull, big pullback, holding the consolidation from before, it's more or less retested the high. And so like it's, if you just go with what history tells you, history's telling you it's gonna happen again. I just probably trailed out of AMD. Yep. 
I trailed out of AMD. I'll hold on to Carvana and Rivian, but I just trailed out of AMD, took the 40 cents. CVNA is starting to head back into the downside. It's through 80.50. I'm looking for 80 and a quarter here to get the first out. So I actually did the opposite of trailing, but I might work that. I mean, it might be this will end up being the exact same. So we actually just took more um, on the chip names. So uh, we got that little bit of a bump up there. I averaged back in into the same price for SMH uh, and just took a piece out there. So now we're starting to go back in. We just got 06s right there. I'm bidding 80s. Let me just put one at 85. There it is, good win, nice win, yes yay, sir. What's yay, up, that's Brendo. Yay, uh, but that's a nice yay, little win for yay. us right there again on SMH as we reloaded that position there. So, um, and then AMD, uh, like Neil mentioned there, we didn't get out of AMD, although now it's pushing right back in. And that, that, those are those outs, like that just happened to Neil that I was saying that happens to me all the time and that I think is gonna happen to, and almost did happen right there to Coinbase. So we are very, very close to having the same thing happen to us on Coinbase. It, like we're 20, 10 cents away from a possible stop out. I mean, it's not a stop out, it's a $2 winner, but um, we will get our position stopped out if that does happen. And then look at SMH still dancing around. We just took out about 30% of the reload right there as well. So again, we reloaded that top take and now we'll see what happens and go over to the desk and see what's up with Adara. This part of the show brought to you by IG. Get as much as 50 to one leverage when trading Forex at IG. Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as 2% margin rates and offer $0 commissions trading using a Forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to $10,000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you very much there, uh, Dara. Look, it's been absolutely wild. Just come to my chart for a quick little second because, oh, wait a minute, I was going to go to AMD as you were saying that. There you go. Coin got we, out. Oh, oh, the wicks. They're back. Uh, but AMD, like I just trailed out of it because VWAP here, I didn't get it all out. So this time, because I've gotten out, I probably should reload it. If it breaks out the top, remember the rule about if the market got to the high, short something at the top that didn't break the top? Well, AMD does fall into that category. And then I kind of stepped up at one to one on Carvana as a little bit of a change there. Shop has decided to not go shopping. It wicks the bottom. That would have been a good entry, but I'm not adding to it. I don't want to add to it. I want to play the, if it's a range bound trade and I've said, said long here, two here, which didn't break first out one to one. And if it breaks out, then I'm in it on a, on, on a somewhat of an upward trend. I know it's down on the day, but it is an upward trend since the open. Then I don't want to be adding to this. It's about, it, realistically, if I look at this, like it's about 20 to 30 minutes until we get to that spot that I want to be considering covering trades and getting out of it. And when we're up 1.6%, I feel like I'm generally favoring fades. I'm usually on a day like today, I'd be finding a small cap to be long. But Shopify, I like the fact that it was a liquidity grab. And I didn't see any small cappers that I liked. I know that rent stock went crazy, and a few people were asking about rent the runway. But it, what it did is essentially just, it's $4, but it went the, the morning range, completely rejected 20 bucks, and then pulled right back into 16. So I'd be a little bit scared that this thing takes $16. If I was long this, you could get slipped a buck. On When I look at the level two of this thing, you could really get slipped a buck. Like a 16 stop could actually be filling you somewhere in like you know, 15 half, 15 20. It's absolutely wild. So I'm going to stay away from rent. If it was stronger, where you could have, like I could, if I could believe in this, like if I was here and I'm taking the breakout, that's great because you're with the momentum. But the dip buy where you're sitting on the bid of something that can fall apart like this, I'm not a huge fan of it. So I'm going to stay away from rent. If I find something else that's making one of those, uh, you know, like runner moves in the afternoon, then uh, I'm all for it. But, you know, rent, great day if you happen to have rent the runway. 1.5 million float, I think it was. And uh, they reported earnings, which must have been good. Didn't read the report. But uh, a bit of a squeeze play here, but I'm staying away from that one. PLDR, that report, I guess. Uh, yeah, you're too, oh. old. you're too old, Neil. Don't worry about it. Uh, too long, didn't read or don't read or whatever. Uh, okay, so we had, we had Alibaba. We had all long. Go I mean, the, the sticky note today has Baba long, Google long, Nike long. 
AMD short 171. So we should really have been short nothing uh, all day because that's what we had planned. Uh, but there it is, and then we had Alibaba. That one came out there, but a pretty good positive stock for us today. We had Amazon long earlier, like as if. Come on, man, 190? Damn. Um, Baba, Amazon, Morgan, we had short Tesla. Tesla's good, but we had the long there too at 170. Uh, we talked about that 168. So yeah, some, you know, some definite kind of trades that we easily could have won, wound up doing better on by holding them. But again, up double what we were down yesterday is not something that I thought was going to happen. And I'm sure some of you also are in that category as well. If we had done a poll, and said, like, just to put odds, like, what are the chances? Let's just, I mean, obviously it's 1.6% now. So let's, like, if we said 1.5 up on the NASDAQ, if PPI print, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. like, yeah. I, I'm going to guess there'd be 10% that bullish. I mean, it's hard to say. It's hindsight 2020. And I'm not just saying that because I didn't necessarily believe in it. But let's be real. I think everyone's, what makes the rally so big is the fact that it surprised everybody. <sighs> Otherwise, it's not, you, that, that's when you get the biggest moves. Uh, SMCI, it's worth mentioning, is up 2%, but this is under VWAP. Uh, like finally, something that kind of makes sense that is weak. See, if this had gone to 970, if I'd, I had that marked off. When it came into resistance for me, that was right at the open when I did not want to be touching SMCI short with a 10-foot pole. I uh, just didn't feel like that was a smart thing to do. And when it didn't press into 970, this is where I would have been more comfortable with it. Underneath the VWAP, that 933 looks like it's going to set up, but it's $8 away from that level. Uh, Sleepy Bull Borb, what do I think of some BlackRock earnings calls? Ugh. Yeah, you know, I know Sharif answered this question, and he just went to the technicals, but... I actually said this to Sean when, I, when Sharif was, at, was answering this question. That I've, I've, I've never really even paid attention to them. I know, I, like, we all know BlackRock, but um, I believe this will be the first time they report uh, go, it's, where they might actually comment on how things are going with some of the new ETFs. So for me, not knowing much about it, I'd want to see how that's playing out. It can't be doing that much for them just yet, but I'd like to see what they see as a tra trajectory. From a technical standpoint, all Shree said was you have an obvious support level, which was resistance before at about 600, 760 bucks, and it's in a clear upward trend. Oddly enough, this is one of the few times where a golden cross in the daily chart would have been a great entry point, and then that point is supports, and that, that confirms the 760 level. But going into earnings on something that I've never really paid any attention to as a stock, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily be gambling on it uh, there. But I am interested to see how the ETFs are playing out for all of these, uh, these new ones. I want to see what they, what they say about them, where they, where they see the profitability coming and the inflows in the second half of the year. And maybe any comments about um, Ethereum, because I figured they should be saying something about that too. Yeah, the problem is they don't make any money on ETFs because it's zero fee trading. So um, yeah, it's probably, uh, I'm not super uh, excited about that. They had Fidelity own something like, it's a huge percentage, more than 50% of the whole ETF market, and it's only like 11% of their uh, income. So it's something, it's something crazy like that. It's not, but it's not about BlackRock. It's about what it means for the group of ETFs and their success. Yeah, the, well, the ETF, yeah, but that's already, ETFs are a blazing success. I mean, oh, they're, absolutely. they're, yeah. So. No question. Um, okay, so what's up, to Elon? Sean, you're probably right about Baba Long Swing. I'm long at 72. So it's at 75 now, so I, I, I like it. It's not even really a swing play, though. I want to be in this name uh, for when it goes all the way back up. So, um, yeah, I, I like it. Thanks for the comment there. And I just think that Alibaba is now broken back above the 50-period moving average. Like I said, if this was a U.S. stock performing the way it does, this stock would be double or triple its value. Um, down here at $74. Jack Moss spoke yesterday, talked about the direction of the company, apparently well-received. Uh, we already know that they have that $25 billion buyback underneath it, so that's huge. Um, any dips, they'll be buying that this stock back, 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 back. And um, yeah, I like the cloud. We love retail, and I think China's been beat up. So this, th this to me, is a great opportunity uh, to pick up some Alibaba. So that's what I did. And if it works out, it works out. I don't know. Um, all right, so SMH, it's 320 right now. Someone said, yeah, Big Rob, what's up, Big Rob? Uh, yeah, we, we were nine for nine yesterday on our names. I'll go over all the names today. We're not that. We're probably 
three and five or three and six, something like that. Uh, but well, we were not down yesterday. No, I think maybe we were talking about the market was down. We were not down. That's the not market down. technically closed down, but I think we marked. Oh, yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, down but because it was up since. Like no, it, no, I it think it was up just, from the low yesterday. So it felt it was like an up day from the open, but it was a down. Yeah, I just think that that guy was confused about what I was saying oh. there. Um, so, okay, that's that. And then SMH and AMD. So those are the only two positions we have right now. We did get taken out of our coin, so I'm going to look back, and I'm probably going to say the same thing. So let's look back. No, good, thank you. All right, so we got stopped out there. It does look like it was the high. Obviously, it falls back in, because why? I mean, that's 75 more cents we could have put it in our pocket. I'm not... Look, we took $2, Coinbase is p &L. I can look, it might be two or three. Morgan Stanley's one today. Uh, Coinbase is p l two off of one trade. Like Morgan Stanley and Coinbase, like the more and more I sit here and trade every single day, the more and more I realize that like, honestly, put on your positions and just believe in them because we loved Google long, we loved Amazon long. Like, like look how, look, look, look at this. Look what we have on Amazon, is that, there's not a lower, nobody has a better price than that today. You, it's, it's not possible unless you had it in the pre-market. Like this is 185.57. It's at 189, and here we are getting them out for like a dollar and change off the open. Hard to predict these things. We'll ho-hum that as we go back and forth. But one thing that we are continuing to do is fire off on that hot dog cannon. Because we talked about SMH a couple times, and there's SMH pulling back down in again right now. We just reloaded this. We talked about that. You know, um, we re-reloaded this position. I liked it. Here it comes, falling back in again. And the reason why we did that is because here we go. You can't be... Um, celebrating your wins and telling everybody that you know you got all the best stocks when today this trophy goes upside down for me uh, it's not we're not we're still everything's fine but we're not number one and neither is Nvidia this is the number one losing stock today and it's it's because of me so there it is right now I mean that's what I'm talking about look at this do 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 you're I think you're even up on Nvidia aren't you I so, made one but I only made one right trade and that's the I'm point not trading this anymore. right see so there you go so being stubborn trading this through these levels gives me an opportunity there. Uh, what's up, Fabian? Yeah, there it is. There to it is. short, 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 oh, and eventually just wind up losing. Uh, because all, like, there's some good trades in here. But again, because of the share size and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's, I couldn't turn this one positive. So we just went over to the SMH and then damage done. But so far, so good right now. Uh, not for my earpiece. Which, so I gave up on NVIDIA. Um, and in the, in the lesson of the day was why AMD instead of NVIDIA and it had a lot to do with that whole notion of if something keeps taking out highs and it's past resistance levels and the other thing isn't well which one do you want to short but what you were saying there actually bodes for now I'm going to not find the comment but there was a question about being in Rivian and what would you do and we're not here to give financial advice on long-term positions except the, what I will say is if you ever get into something that is a trade as a trader we all know this what is your reason for being in and what is your out? Now, sometimes you end up in something and you don't have an out. I don't do it in particular anymore. But if it has happened to you, then you've got to come up with one. Like, where is your stop going to be? Is it a reason? Like, I'm going to wait for, for a, a, another quarter and I want to see something in the report. It's going to be something fundamental. It is at a key price level. You've got to figure that out for yourself because... Once, you, once you're now stuck in it and you don't know what to do, but you've, you've essentially held maybe past the stop or something like that, all you can do is do the work because a lot of people probably dumped this thing at $10 already as an obvious stop. And then if you looked at the support level in here underneath 13, like to me, it's like if you, to not have those as stops it's because I'm like sh shooting it and willing to have it go to zero. And like that's, which is not unreasonable depending on how much you put into it and what you're willing to lose. But if... But if you haven't done that, find yourself an out. And, it's, and I can't tell you what your out should be. I can just tell you that it's under a lot of pressure down here. And even if, as <laughs> Randy was giving us a lot of good reasons why this thing um, could turn it around. And they made some sense to me, but I think it's a dog. I did reshort this one off of VWAP. It just came back to 50 and broke. The low of the day was $9.38. It never went short sell restricted. So it was never an SSR bounce. If it hits the low of the day, I want to jump out of this one. And sometimes, you know, you look back and it, it, like hindsight is, hindsight's always twenty twenty. 
But we said this about a firm at 50 at the beginning of the year. And if you were a trader and you just simply said, okay, fine, you could, you could have done this going all the way back to August, but let me zoom in and just say this uh, for the beginning of this year. In the first week of this year, Rivian lost the 50 and the 200 period moving average. And this is a trend down, obviously in hindsight. But if your approach was, I'm just gonna look short on this every single day, or just all of the week in EV names, every single day, with the exception of Nikola, which Sean pointed out is the only one that's up over the course of the year, you pretty much couldn't lose. So when the trend is in a certain direction, it can be your guide. It doesn't mean that you short it uh, to oblivion and never have an out, but if your approach was to look for shorts, then I think you would have found some success. And it's the same thing with some of these um, big cap tech names. I'm just gonna pull up Meta as an example because I know it's an upward trend. Like if you were looking for longs in Meta, more often than not, it's gonna be the right place to start. So you start your day off sometimes observing what that trend uh, might be in the higher time frame, and it can help you. I think it, it can develop, you can develop a bias. It doesn't mean you're gonna force trades in that direction, but it does mean you're gonna favor them in that particular direction. If that means 60, 70% of your trades are with the overall trend, I think that's fantastic. I did just take, take some out of Carvana at this local bottom because it's rejecting 81s and can't seem to break the 50 level. I'm looking for a bigger push down. It is 325, and when you're trading at real trading, you're day trading. And if it's your first time um, watching a day trading show, you want to be flat at the end of the day. So even if a stock, like if Carvana flushes to $70 tomorrow, it doesn't mean anything uh, for me because I'm going to be out of this one way or another by four o'clock, and you start to think about taking profits where they lie, tightening stops, things of that nature. So getting a little bit out here for some profit on Carvana, and then we'll see where it can go. Uh, NVIDIA is getting right back up to that yeah, high. Yeah. Uh, easy Trader, um, I meant Nikola's up on the year. Um, I don't have the graphic that you put up there. Not Nikola's up today, Nikola is just up uh, on the calendar year it's up. Today it's down 26%, but it's still actually, like this was 60 cents. Uh, going back to, in March it was 60 cents, in beginning of January, okay, yeah, it's, okay, never mind, it's not up in the air anymore. Okay, well, when we talked about it last time, Nikola was the only one that was up. It's yeah, because it was up 24%, and then now today it's down 24%. Yeah, so, so okay, uh, so you're, that's my bad. Um, I didn't, well, what, I, before today? Yeah, I was trying to, I was referencing the graphic. Up until today, it was the only EV name in yes. no, North America that was green on the year. In the world. It was every. It was everyone. See, in the world, and now today, even it was Lee, if, like Lee Auto was on. So there, Lee's not like, up on the air. No, no, they're all getting smoked, man. Uh, okay, so I, I can find that for you guys in a minute. Um, right now, I just want to go show show everything here. Um, Nvidia. So the only thing is, I think we could probably go long on oh, a yeah. break of the day's high. But the thing is, is that. Then you run into 905. 905 has been an area, and I'm down on NVIDIA today. I already told you guys that. But I think that 905, we've shorted this a couple times. I remember that. We've only spent, a, I mean, this is just in the month, basically. We've only spent one day above 905. Uh, we did get a couple movements up to 910, but after that, we've faded it out. We tried to get back up there, faded back again. So it's just... I don't think there's a problem going long at the high of the day, which is 9.03, or, I mean, I can find to you exactly here in one second. Um, high of the day, yeah, 9.03.56. So I don't think there's anything wrong with going long on that break there. It's just, I, I would say, me, myself and I, would say get something out in and around that 05, 06 area, which would only be about a buck, a buck 50, but that would be at least like, you know, maybe... 30, 40%, I don't know, whatever you guys want, but that's just an area to look at for possible concern. All right, um, we did Whoa. short SMH when that just came back in a little bit there, so there it is again. Wow, all right, fire this hot dog cannon off again. Like Neil said, well, I'm just trying to scalp this out. Like, you know, we're trying to, sca we're trying to scalp out, try to stack up a little bit. AMD um, has come back up, but uh, while Frank was on, I believe, I think we talked about this, yeah. So it was while Frank came back on, I put it in the chat. I was like, man, AMD, whenever we get back down into the 200 period, that's where pretty much I'm gonna take out almost, well, I only have 5% left of this. So I'm gonna take out pretty much everything when it comes back in here. Not only that, it matched with past support. So 
for day trading and for, for the style of trading that I do, that is like a pretty much a perfect storm there. So that came right back in, we got out. I'll average it back, but not until 170.50. We want to try to be as specific as we can here uh, with this name. What's that noise? What is that noise? Uh, I don't know. Crazy Something beats going on. Some crazy beats. Uh, so about global life. About okay, crazy so beats. Yeah, apparently, so, you know, we, every now and then, look, at Trader TV Live, we're going to try to give you absolutely every moving stock. We'll trade what we trade, but if something crazy happens, we're here to try to cover it live. Like, that's yeah. what we're all about. I'm not going to pretend to be perfect about this. So this is the first time looking at global life today. Down 52% um, because... <laughs> You know, what the hell, you don't know about global life? Well, I'm only chuckling because um, the short position taken on in the story, it's not funny, people own this thing. But Fuzzy Panda took a short position in... In Fuzzy Life? You know what? And I would never, like, uh, I don't even short things in my personal account overnight. I might sell covered calls. That's about as bearish as I get in my long-term account. And, and, and outside of here, we'll trade as day traders. But if I were to ever start, like, a, like a, one of those shorting firms... I feel like give it a joke's name so that people like, people want to hate on you, but then it's like, how can you say Fuzzy Panda and not have a smile on your face? Right. It made me laugh. No, but down 51%. I sometimes, I don't know, I didn't read the report, I have no idea. Maybe they're saying fraud. I have no clue, but I've generally found when you have a nasty short report like this that does this, if the next couple of days it holds that low, there's usually a long to be had. Wow. We saw that with Square, and I'm not saying go long off 40, but if tomorrow it's above 40, and the day after that, it also holds a higher low there, and ideally the same higher low, so like a, a double bottom at 45 or a double bottom off 50, then it becomes a tradable level that I would be interested in. But um, global life shares are obviously getting trounced today. And if you shorted this pretty much at any point other than an hour ago, uh, you've been laughing. The shorts are in control, and the VWAP is, what is that, like $17, $18 from here to the upside. That's how nasty it's been. Uh, obviously, it's a bit of an SSR bounce. One of the setups that I usually like if I see this is the, the, halt, the wipe out halt bottom. When a stock is down this much and it hasn't halted, it then halts, and all you're looking for is another halt and then regain one of the halt prices. So it doesn't happen here, it then halts here. The breakout is go long, that halt price, which is 41.40, and then like I'd put a really tight stop, like 40, because that's how I roll, like I'm not fighting it that much. And if it holds that $1.50, you simply hold it into the next up halt, and then I would be getting out in here. So you get like five, six bucks, you risk $1.50, because it's an exhaustion type move. We saw this happen a lot with a like GameStop back in the day. Uh, I preferred it on costs because sometimes people weren't paying attention to costs and then you could do it in GameStop uh, or costs. But anyways, uh, Global Life, nasty, nasty, nasty. Be careful uh, with those. But it's worth watching tomorrow to see what happens. Maybe it makes a bit of a bottom. You, you may have a short report like this and you take a short position. They do this so that they can make money, right? So they're going to cover when this happens. And when they're doing that, you might see the accumulation and then you can make a long off of it. I was looking, uh, a firm just popped up, but it's really nothing happening. It's just at this 50 period moving average. Is it up today? Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, it's not up as much as this market is up as we've seen a lot of the rally action happen in the mag, but uh, in the big tech names. A firm, again, we've talked about this name at 50 bucks and how much we love that short. Uh, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have um, any shorts left in our account. We did short this name. Uh, but there it is, nice, nice move down to 50 bucks, trying to barcode up here. Just noticing that hit the 50 period moving average and it's basically flat today. So a firm, just something you that bought we- bought puts, right? A while ago, yeah. yeah. I don't have shares, I've, I never bought this name. Yeah. This was that whole buy now, pay never thing that yeah, I was talking it, No, about. I just but wanted to I, clarify I, because you guys know that here we trade equity only, but obviously- Oh yeah. Yeah, here it's equity only. We're not trading options here live. But um, in our personal accounts, like we can. Yeah. So therefore, yeah, it's not a big deal. But again, a firm since that 50, PLTR. this was why I pulled up the, this is why I referenced it with, refer, with uh, reference to the, the downward trend in the EVs. Is since it got there, if your approach was short every short, go short every short setup, there's got to be a better way to say that. Go short every short setup? No, that's There's got to be a better way we to say that. We just got more out on s Yeah, but it's like, how could you go wrong? If you're, if you're just generally biased in the direction when you see that, you pretty much can't lose. Uh, Snowflake's apparently doing well. 
You yeah, we. I recently bought Snowflake. I think it was what, 153, 154. I don't know. What is it at? Percent. Four percent today. Up, up four percent. But anyway, some of these names have gotten hit recently. Anyway, so Snowflake is a very, very much a starter position for me. We'll, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens with Snowflakey uh, on that one. So there comes SMH back in. We just said what we were going to do. What we're going to do today on this name, and that was now hold. So I'm going to hold for something in the 80s. If we can get another dip down into here somewhere, uh, the 50 period moving average is 85. We just got reloaded. I mean, OK. I mean, we just reloaded it again right here at uh, whatever that price is, 17. So I guess that's what I have right now. Uh, oh, it's an average price of 13.5. OK, so we just reloaded at 17s or 18s there, uh, now coming back in off of our initial 10s or whatever. Here it goes. So remember, our stop, that, I mean, this is why we're just taking these out. Um, our stop initially on that, of course, is right here as we get ready to get taken out at 25. So here we go. This is the high of the day again on the chip names. As we talked about NVIDIA starting to go, uh, um, so here we go. We'll get stopped out of that. Watch out for NVIDIA. For those of you that are in this, I'm just so glad that I'm not in this because like, I'd be, I would have talked myself into shorting this top again. I don't think we would have got stopped out yet. We might have actually had a decent winner right there, but um, it is trying to make that move again. And it was just a slippery slope for me because we, we, were, we were right on every single position. Every single short we had went in the money for us. So we should be up on it, but we're not because we took too many shares, one of these last ones, it was right into here, where I thought 900 was gonna hold. When it didn't, that was, for me, um, the, you know, the Alamo. coup de gras. Yeah, coup de gras Alamo. I, I like I, the... I, I like both of those. I like, I like mine better, but um, that, that was the end of that one, 902, now to the high side, and I'm glad I, glad I got out. Even though we went back down to the downside there, like if I don't get out there at 900, it goes to that 902 or 903 again, so it's just like compound, 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 and then I've next thing you know, um, we are in trouble. Like, again. obviously, that's a French term, a figure of speech. Yes. But um, we're Canadian. We're in Canada, so we're Canadian. What? French, oh, just for everyone watching okay. here, uh, French is like our, it's actually our second official language, and we're forced to learn French when we're in school. That's until sad that point. we are, actually. But, like, coup de gras, like, I actually don't know what that translates to. Like, I know what the phrase, what is it? Kick of grace? No. Okay. Do uh, we have but, to go to Adara? No, I was just thinking, I, I, I should know what that means, like literally, but that's a first for me. I'm a bad Canadian in that way. Like, I was terrible at languages, and I just, I don't know. I know, like, you, like, a lot of. I a, hate language. A lot of people, because you, like, you had to start learning French in grade. I don't hate we started grade five, it's, you had to uh, I up think until it's grade three. Okay, so three to nine. My kids are used doing it now. And then after grade nine, it's it's a choice. We actually have my daughter in French immersion, so now I'm saying I hated it, and now I'm forcing my daughter. No, but she actually, she was interested in it. We'll see if that actually continues. But it, it's a valuable thing to be had, but man, did I ever hate it. And every one of our friends couldn't stand it, with one exception, yeah. and that's the guy that told me to buy TD stock. So what does he know? Nothing. Apparently. Uh, we're not going to Adara. Adara. Yeah, we're supposed to. We are? Oh, to Adara? This part of the show brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real-time scanning and alerting using our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the market with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. For 20% off? Are we breaking out 905 uh, tomorrow? Uh, we are breaking everything out starting ASAP. Okay, um, AMD, I, I, yeah, I think tomorrow is going to be a big day. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. I actually haven't looked. Join me tonight on the Market Recap Show where we will have a couple chicken dinner winners to show you. We also will have uh, Miss Danielle Shea coming through um, to talk all about everything. She wants to talk about Microsoft being the next big one to break higher. She wants to talk about the move on NVIDIA today. Um, and that should be a lot of fun. So we'll have Miss Danielle Shea coming through um, tonight on the Recap Show. 100% guaranteed. Uh, already confirmed with her. So uh, we'll see her on tonight and we'll talk all about this huge run up in everything uh, lately. And she has called this too. The everything rally? Yeah, she had called this. So make sure that you do join me because she had like labeled it out and, and, and told us about what to expect coming forward. Nailed the Microsoft call um, and then nailed Amazon. We're going to talk to her about that as well. Those and two that has no one been could buy. Sh shorting Tesla for a while as well. So those have been some good trades. We'll talk to her all about that.
If you can't get the good prices, that usually means, like, like in Tesla, you haven't been able to get the good shorts on the daily chart. Amazon and Microsoft, you have not been able to get the dip buy. You get all the shares you want on the Come dip on, buy in Andy, Apple. What are you doing? You, you even got a dip buy in Google because Google pulled back to the 200 period moving average. Everything else, you just can't. Uh, so I, it's, we're not at a reload spot in CVNA. But, and I'm not going to move it down. I'm just going to target. It's now 338, so forget about VWAP. I think 80 is about as good as we're likely to get. Shopify took some out flat because it came up here, started to curl. It's like, okay, you're not, it doesn't have enough time. Well, I, I'm figuring it doesn't have enough time to break this out and get up there. Right? Like you're running out of time for that. So I'm just going to take some out for like one cent. It doesn't really matter. It's about the fact that it didn't go when I wanted it to go. So why sit in it? It gave me a chance to get some out. I'm just going to take advantage. And I, I rebid on the way back down. Didn't get filled. I'm going to cancel that bid at least for now. And Rivian, I think a similar adjustment. We're not going to get back to VWAP. And if we do, I probably don't want it. But I still think the low of the day for Rivian. Uh, Lucid, I probably don't. Ugh. Oh, man, Lucid's right here. Yeah, maybe I'll, still, finally going maybe I'll still take it, but not for much, because it's about to break that 250 level as we speak, and you'll have to tell me when we're going to the sector watch. Yeah, we're not, I haven't heard anything. Okay. Uh, okay, so I did the same thing as you there, kind of, and we just, we had AMD fall back down in a little bit, and we just took some out. I don't, it looks like we may uh, continue to run here. We do have not too much time left uh, here in the day as we'll wait for these imbalances to come through uh, later on. But you know, no major rebalances or anything today. It's a Thursday, uh, but we should be able to see something here, especially in these big names as they just continue. Oh, oh by the way, we'll go to the sector or uh, to Adair in one second. I just want to show everybody that Nvidia did take out that high. So there it is right there. We said it was uh, 90265, whatever, what is it the time? So there it is, now it's up in, and now a dollar, we did warn about this possibly slowing down in and around 905, 906. So here it goes. Congratulations. Props it up, man. Everybody that had that had that, and you guys win. So um, nice move right there for all the traders on NVIDIA Long. Congratulations. You guys nailed that today. And Adair is over at the big desk or at the screen. So Lots of outsized moves here on the S&P 500 to talk about, and a few of them on the high side, including here Micron, MU. This went up over 4%. Their DRAM supply was a little bit of a concern after the Taiwan earthquake, but today they verified that there's not going to be a long-term problem to some potential short-term issues. So that uh, long-term lack of concern, giving this one a nice boost to the upside. We also have Airbnb, a couple mixed analyst opinions here in this one. We get a downgrade from Needham, but we also get a buy rating here from Benchmark, which seems to be what's buoying this one up more than 3%. Last but not least here, we can move to the downside here on Fastenal, down over 6% after missing earnings this morning. Not too much, but missing across the board here. So lots of names to keep an eye on here. Big moves here in the S&P, guys. Yeah, that seems like a, that seems like a good story for Mike wow, in there. Uh, so look, I'm going to give, if Lucid hasn't broken 250 in the next five minutes, maybe I don't take it. I don't want to get wrapped up in, because Lucid sometimes has an imbalance. I don't want to get wrapped up in that imbalance trade for this. I'm just looking for a scalp trade on a 250 break. Uh, CVNA, I'm really starting to think, should I even bother reloading that short? Uh, I think the answer is probably going to be a no. NVIDIA, you've got to be kidding. Oh, I didn't actually say anything about 905. I just sort of said it to Sean. Uh, this 905 level was the ultimate rejection on NVIDIA. It was the biggest down move. And this was kind of close, but it was the biggest down move we've had recently intraday. I know it was also... It's had a few of these like big, massive uh, retracements, but the 905 was just gigantic, and it did it in a stair step, and it rejected right at the open. So this is a big resistance level. I'm not shorting it here. My thought would be if it opens and holds this above tomorrow, you're breaking it out to like 920. But it's, I find this afternoon, like 10 times out of 10, nine times out of 10, I'd probably be trying to short this. And yeah, I feel like my, my, my play today is just to like, <sighs> I am playing capital preservation because I feel as if I didn't have the I didn't have the read for the long today at all, despite starting out with two of the best. Like I was long Google and Amazon and then basically like flat one up, one down. But both of them are essentially flat positions and both of the outs are about as embarrassing as they can be. Like I look back on this and I'm like, that's an abject fail. Like I was reloading, oh. like I was reloading this stupid thing, and then just finding myself not in it when it finally went. So 
Now, I'm going to stay away from this NVIDIA. Most times I'd be shorting that on five here. Yeah, so I'm, um, I was just saying the same thing under my breath there is like, I feel the same stupid stupidness, to be honest with you, because, um, you know, and I actually just messaged Marissa. I was like, what the hell am I doing? Uh, because, you know, I need, I, I need that uh, support. But um, no, I was like, why am I shorting N uh, AMD again? Uh, and she just asked me, how's everything going? So I was like, oh yeah, everything's going fine, except for I keep shorting. Um, but there it is right now, so she knows exactly what, what's good. Um, we talk business all the time, so sorry about that, Marissa. Uh, but here we go, I actually met her at, at the office. So, all right, here we go to the downside right now, 170.84. She was managing uh, and trading at the office, a real trading office in North Bay, uh, when I met her and I was working as sort of, uh, I was only 25 or 26 years old, but at that time, um, working as a support and all that kind of stuff, trading still, teaching, doing all that as a young whippersnapper, uh, running around for the company. But now we do this, and we are live here with you every damn day. So let's go on that one, and let's prop that up for everybody that continues to watch us, because guess what? Your boy is back. Uh, right now we are short AMD. We talked about that, and guess what? It's another sticky note banger right there. We said do not do anything, but my stupid, dumb, you know what, d ignores my own writing. Uh, we said AMD 171. That's the level. If we just waited all damn day until 345, we write this thing eight hours ago. It actually only holds true right now at this time of day. So there it is. We have it, man. We are short at 170.84, and we got position. So let's go. Let's put another bid here at 60, see if we're able to take that out as there it goes we'll put another bid down here at 53 and then we'll ride so now let's go let's see what happens here into the close on this position I like it um, and we just covered some more down there anyways so so far so good here we'll see if AMD can make its move back in we should have just been I got a teaching moment a little bit um, we should have been a little bit better on that one but the only thing and the reason why I messaged um, well what would I say that to the wife there was quite simple because when I went on the walk, I always call her um, and we just talk about whatever. And she's like, how's your day and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing the exact same, like I know exactly what I'm doing wrong and I just keep on doing it over and over again. And that's, um, that's been such an important growth thing is, is like stay away from the stuff that hasn't been working. And I, when I was getting into this, I, I basically, I don't even care if this works. I don't think it's the right trade. Like I was 171 is fine. That was the level that we wrote down. But all of this shorting, 170, all this, we should have just been as patient as possible and waited for this trade. It's great that it's working now. Look, man, we'll, we'll, we'll take credit where credit is due and we'll fire off the hot dog cannons because it's a 20 cent winner. But at the end of the day, I don't feel like that was um, a very, very wise decision to do that. But at, the, but at the end of the day, we still make those decisions and we're human. So there's NVIDIA 905. Again, as we mentioned it right there, like don't do anything until 905 and there it is, but whatever. I'm not upset with NVIDIA, just we went back to the well too many times. The one thing, all, all, I, will say, all I will say about that is, if you've been trading once, first of all, 90% of traders, one of their problems is they don't actually bother to understand what doesn't, like, okay, well, like, if you can't say what happened in your day, good or bad, or you can't articulate your trade or articulate, like, what you did wrong. I remember the first day of, uh, no, sorry, the second day of, DWAC? I think it was DWAC. And I was short it 27 times out of 32 trades. So it was, it was doing ridiculous volume. You, if, you were, if you weren't scalping it, most everybody was trading it that day. And I think I had five longs to 27 shorts. And I, was, and I was flat on the day. And immediately I was like, oh, because the last short actually worked. So I was down and then the last one worked and it looked fine. And I looked back and I was like, that was the dumbest thing ever. Because if I had been 27 long and five short, I would have had a, a monster day. It was easy to identify. But the other point would be, no matter how, you, no matter, the market doesn't care what you have done up into a certain point. If you get to a level that you're supposed to trade because it's a setup for you, everything you did before that kind of doesn't matter. And sometimes you're just like, is it still setting up and you got to be able to do it? So anyways, um, I think it makes sense if it's at that level. Time of day does matter in terms of how you trade that level. That's the reason I didn't reload Carvana. We have two minutes until the imbalances come in. And I just realized I didn't move my stop and shop. I took half of it out. I'm going to get it all out if it pops again into flat. But I elected not to reload Carvana because of the time of day. I'm going to wait till 80 once again. Uh, Adam Deleuze, I hope that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Brad just said Apple said... What did Apple... I don't have Apple up right now. I don't have any. And I don't know if... When it's uh, screwing up? people over, oh, it's still going higher. Because uh, I wasn't uh, sure if you meant that that meant it pulled back, and I'm not going to repeat that because I'm not going to cuss. But, um, yeah, Apple's going the other way. You want it to be one way? 
It's the other way. And sometimes that's just the truth. Uh, we all want Apple to go up, but it has been an absolute dog. But at least this is a name that you had an opportunity to dip by, right? This gave it to you. Where I would be, where I think the frustration lies is Microsoft has not been so, has been as kind. Uh, Google, yes. Amazon, maybe, uh, to be sure. Look, there's some names that have been absolutely dogs, but I think for the most part, this has been one of those rallies that, oh, yeah, there it is, 85.10. So I guess I did have to do the Bring Sally Up Challenge. We actually just cracked to 11. So NASDAQ's 1.7% today. And I can't say enough about the fact that the trend is your friend, and I'm saying that over and over again because I didn't follow it. Microsoft, an absolute banger, has a chance at a flat top all-time high break uh, today. And we're just about to start earnings season. Start it up again. And when these guys all have good numbers, like what are you going to do then? Now what? Well, that's like, why I said they're all going to have monster like, numbers. Like now what? Like, you, want, you want to pull back when, when Microsoft is printing billions of dollars? Like, you know who's not going to have a good report? ARM. That's who's not going to have a good report. Because it's impossible for them to have a report really? that justifies their price. No, I mean, they're, th they're 40 times sales. There, there, there isn't even a report possible that they could have that would make it valuation reasonable. But I promise you I'm going to pull but up there a is, chart. But, I mean, on a growth stock, there is no reason. Exactly. Right, but then look so. at the chart of ARM. That's well, my, I'm being kind of tongue-in-cheek. But it doesn't matter in ARM. And I say that as an idiot that sold at 120, half of my position. It looks so bad. Because I'm waiting for it to fall apart, and I've been waiting for this thing to fall apart for a while so I can buy it at a quote-unquote value. All right, well, um, no idiot here with this position on AMD today. I mean, there it is, man, finally. Nice move back in. We just take another piece out at 50. There it is. The imbalances are now out. I have no idea. I'm going to put a bid uh, right here. Cancel, get some out um, just to see what we do. And there it is, Whoa. the imbalances. Yeah, TLT what, what is got? a 6.5 buy. General Motors is 3.5 million to buy. Penn is 2 million to buy. Okay. That's a bit weird. Uh, Intel, 1.6 million to the buy side. Apple's a 1.3 sell. Uh, that's the biggest of the big cap tech names. Intel will pair off. The one that stands out because you don't usually see Penn have any kind of an imbalance for any, I mean, GM, fine, but that's had imbalances before. It'll probably pair Pen, two million to buy, and it didn't even move. Okay. That could have been, but for it not to be reacting on a two million buy imbalance, it's only done 3.8 million shares on the day. Uh, unless there's some kind of index action I'm unaware of. I can't imagine why there would be. I didn't see anything on my note this morning. So Pen is the only one that stands out, and then Apple, 1.3 million to the sell side after it cracked 175. I'm going to get out of Carvana on the next available dip. And if it happens to be into that 840 again, then you take what you can get. That's how the market works. All right. Um, yeah, and how the market also works is down uh, side. So let's go, man. We will continue to ride that bear. Man, we took a lot of flack uh, for being so bearish today. But again, it um, hasn't worked on some names, but has worked on others. There's AMD all the way now. Good trade on this one to end the day. We talked about putting that on. We wanted to trust our levels, and we did exactly that. I just wish we would have trusted them a little bit longer uh, and held out for this huge move. But into the close, I mean, whatever. AMD, nice downside move one more time right there. The biggest and baddest trade of the day, uh, P&L-wise, here on all shows. This one, Morgan Stanley, 90-91. Look, I mean, unbelievable move to the downside on news. Have the ability to trade many different styles, right? I mean, we broke this for you um, immediately. As soon as I heard it, I went over to it. It was against me 50, 60, 70 cents. We just held on to it. Our stop was 91. Um, it's going to look pretty good now because of where it is. But honestly, like, I didn't know that it was going to drop this much. Really glad to take the profit on that. Morgan Stanley ahead of bank earnings tomorrow. Should be really awesome. Join me on the after show with Ms. Shea. We'll talk to her. Um, and then we'll talk all about, like I said, tomorrow's earnings report. Uh, coming from those banks. She wants to talk about um, some of these major tech moves up, what to expect heading into earning season. And then maybe if you're lucky enough, and depending on my mood, uh, we'll possibly do a Q&A with, with Miss Danielle Shea, which always goes over really well with all our guests, Brian, Chris, everybody, myself, uh, all that kind of stuff. So they like the Q&A. So we'll continue to do that for everybody. But what a good day it's been. I'm going to leave in a couple minutes. So just to get over there to get all set up for once again.
the recap show. We have um, basically, we have the all day feed. So we have three shows. We have the all day feed that goes, which is kind of sandwiched there in the middle there um, is the learn to trade uh, all day. And then we have, first of all, we have our mobile site that's up right now as well. We have more Trader TV Live. We have a bunch of stuff kicking for you. And then we have the recap show and the podcast, which gets filmed tomorrow, tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow. The sun will come out. Yes. Well, I'm trying to, yeah, we, all, we just watched The Wizard of Oz on movie night last Sick. week. So we're doing some old school in my household. My daughter, for whatever reason, wanted to watch The Wizard of Oz. Sick. Someone in her class must have said something because she had zero My son report. just referenced Wizard of Oz for some reason. Something must have, you know what, there, there must, must have been be something. There something must, be must something. have happened. Is there like some, a Netflix special or something? Yeah, or like happening? a meme or something. Yeah, and then yeah. kids were talking about The Wizard of Oz because she asked, can I watch The Wizard of Oz? I'm like, Same thing in my house. I'm like, we're good with it. But uh, yeah, Annie is orphan Annie. I feel like is something that one day we'll do. I'm just baff. I am dumbfounded, like I said, by this move. Try to keep it tight to the vest here today. I'm not out yet on Rivian. I put a 960 stop on it. I'm just and I just took out Carvana. And again, I feel like if it had been a little bit later in the day, or earlier in the day, I should say, like this might have had a better chance when it gave up the 81 because the resistance is there, but we have five minutes to go, so I got to get out in front of support. Let's just take it out at 850. It doesn't get the move that I would have liked for the retracement, but we can always revisit this tomorrow. Brad saying, look at coin. What's wow. it doing? Unbelievable. Rip See? City? And if you're wondering, it's like, I could have easily gone back to this well. Like, I feel like I would normally have just been like, this is my level, let's just short it again. And coins at $263. Booyah. So it's still going higher. Sometimes the best you can do is get, I just, there's no way I wanted any part of a long here. And so we didn't take it, but wow, Coinbase absolutely flying. Now up 5%. This is a rip your face off rally. And everything started with that big liquidity grab on CPI where everything bottomed out. Bef and before, wow. Before I go, really hey Coinbase? Fabian, uh, before I go, I just want to say something. PL number two on the day is Coinbase, okay? Um, and again, you know, show dependent, show non dependent. The thing about this is, I only went short. It's understand that you got to get that out when this happens. So that's why we follow some levels. Uh, did you want to say something to me, Fabian, or all good? You want me to come over there? Because I'm leaving. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, um, all right, so we'll do that. Thank you so much uh, for watching. It's been obviously a monster day uh, for both the longs and the shorts. I'm just going to cover AMD right there. So we will get out of that one, face slap it up a little bit there uh, for AMD. Head over, get ready for the closing show uh, where it's going to be hopefully another good one for you. Um, and yeah, we'll do that. We're back tomorrow. It's Friday. Uh, I don't know if there's news on coin. Neil will be able to look that up. I didn't see any. Shout out to Adam no. Deleuze. Thank you for the two. British pounds. Yeah, I didn't see anything in particular in that last minute, but, uh, and then again, maybe my feed has, hasn't had it hit yet on Coinbase, but I'll keep an ear to the ground. We only have three minutes to go, so eh, does it really matter? Is anyone punching long right here? I don't think so. Uh, th thank you very much there, Adam Deleuze, obviously. It's a fun show today. I think sometimes, like, like I said, today was a day where the shorts were enough to pay off if you were disciplined to be green, but finding the longs would have been better. So I'll be self-critical about it, whether you're up or not. You know, today could have been a banger long. Future Eddie, yo, what's goof, I mean good with rent, I'm assuming is what you meant there. I said no to rent, and rent is paying your rent, but at this $20 level on rent, somebody is dumping this. Let's go to Adara. Yeah, just quickly, this Coinbase story, we did get a story around 11.30 today. Coinbase derivatives launching Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin futures contracts, saying that they will be available for trading via their broker and FCM partners. So that's where coming around, out around 11.30 when we started to kind of get this move up in this game, guys. Okay, so I didn't know if it was anything new, but that's a story that thank you, and thank you for Adair for that, uh, just reiterating. That was a little bit earlier uh, than before. Joe Schmo, man, we always try to drop the knowledge every time we can. All I can do is sort of tell you like what I see in the market, like what, I, what we're going to do in the market, um, what we learned from the day. That's what the lesson of the day uh, was all about. And if you, if you didn't check it out, as a bit of a summary, like today, AMD was a more reasonable thing to have been shorting. And I was down on AMD. AMD was my number one red stock after 10 o'clock. And I was up on NVIDIA on a short 
But instead, I did not reshort NVIDIA. I went over to AMD and lesson of the day is about why. Like, why did I say, well, you're up on NVIDIA, stick with it. No, it was like, nah, no, that's not the right thing to do. I should go over to AMD uh, because of what the trend differences were. It's a crazy, crazy type of market, but you know what? That's the best market. You don't necessarily, if, you, if, the, if the market makes sense to you every single day, then there's probably not that much opportunity in it because you want people to be caught off guard. You want things to surprise people. That's where you get all of the best trends and all that good stuff. So 90 seconds to go in here. Uh, NVIDIA is at $907 and on a collision course with infinity as far as I'm concerned at this point. Like how many people were like, it goes into correction territory, pullback territory, and then next thing you know, you're breaking it right back out. And I'm talking about this. You pull back from 960 into $830. So you got that big retracement that everyone was looking for. And the response to that was a, a lot of dip buying. That is a stock that's in demand. The market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. And if you just fight it, fight it, fight it, you might catch the top. But if you don't catch the top, you're going to find yourself wrecked. And NVIDIA is the perfect example of that. Apple as well. I did want to double check just because uh, Penn had that weird imbalance on it. It must have just reversed it. But yeah, Penn looks like it reversed and paired off that imbalance. It did move up a little bit and is now paired off and pulled back. So. Yeah, it was big, 2 million shares and into 4 million is a pretty significant number, but no continuation on that pen uh, move to the upside. We'll keep an eye on this one maybe tomorrow morning. There could have been something there. I'm going to guess it was just some whale that wanted to exit the position. Uh, there was no index action. 15 seconds to go, which means get the camera off me, put it on Adara, as now there's a pullback in the market. In 10, oh, pass that. In 5, 4, 3, 2, and ring it. Like right there at the end, the NASDAQ pulled back about 20, 30 points. The ES pulled back about 30 points. NVIDIA basically didn't pull back at all, closing 4% to the upside. Absolute rocket ship. Coinbase, just going to double check here. Coinbase got to 264, actually beating NVIDIA in terms of percent gain on the day. It's been wild, it's been crazy, it's been fun, but it ain't over because you got the recap and you still have trading in tomorrow. We got one more day of trade with options expiring at the end of the week. I would expect that's gonna be a big event. Big shout out to Fabian. Uh, Ramin's been off and Fabian's been on the ones and twos uh, doing it all by himself and he's been doing a fantastic job and you know, can't thank him enough for that. Learn to Trade has been fantastic as it always is. Adara bringing news as well in Brendan's stead. Uh, Sharif and Adair have been crushing it, giving you how to range trade pretty much all week. Today, maybe not the rangiest of days, but you know what? When it is a range-driven market, you want to be able to learn how to take advantage of it. Shout out to Frank. Today, he didn't have to pump the markets. It had already pumped it, but it's good to have him on giving that higher time frame and a more sophisticated look um, on the long-term crazy markets that we're in. Don't want to waste any more time. You know where you're going. You got Danielle Shea joining the Market Recap Show with Sean at the desk in the good-looking plaid. There ain't no rest for the wicked. Welcome to the Market Recap Show. We had a wicked, wicked, wicked ending right there as the market just fell down just a little bit there for the NASDAQ. And what a big day it was, up 16 percent and it got going real early man um we had well first of all this is middle of the day when we had the bond auction coming out at 463 versus 46431 or 434 that really got the market bumping as well but check out this as we'll zoom out a little bit whoa there it is right there that's the ppi number coming out at 0.2 versus 0.3 month over month 2-1 versus 2-2 two, two, year over year, but continues to make a move higher here is the NASDAQ. Now again, let's look at a daily chart for the NQs. Uh, that's a three-minute chart. That's still a three-minute chart. This, this turning back and forth here, I got to figure this out. Um, I'm doing something wrong. Let me go over to a daily quickly and just looked at the NASDAQ just to show you. We are very, very close to breaking out. The market sprung to the upside today during the midday session following that 30-year bond auction. And that's sort of what this was right there. Just started to get going and we never really stopped after that. How important was that? 
467 versus 433 there um, on the 30 year bond. Uh, Fed speak rolls out all day today. The market just continues to pump higher. PPI print 21 versus 22. That's a banger. Actually, let's do this one. Let's think about all these calculations as we go. Month over month, 0.2 versus 0.3. Um, we had yesterday. However, CPI numbers yesterday send the market the other way yesterday. Get out of here. Look at this on CPI yesterday, PPI today, end result higher. What a monster this market continues to be. Both Fed Williams and Fed Collins both saying the market cuts will come, but they potentially will just happen later on in the year. So once again, anybody looking at Fed rate cuts, and we talked about this with Frank Caberna, we talked about this live two days ago when it was a 2% chance for no cuts whatsoever. Well, check this out. Here's the Fed rate tool. Let's go to December right now and see what they're saying for December. There it is. There is an 11% chance now that we stay, oh, hold on, let me zoom this out. 11% chance now from 2% to 11 that there are no cuts. 10% chance? Nah, I don't know. I'm not sure if we agree with that. But there it is right there. I mean, that's just what's priced in. The market's wrong until it's right, I guess. Does that make any sense? Um, all right, today, the MAG7 names. Let's have a quick look at this. Uh, where is it? There it is right here. Uh, you might want to get my face off here for a second, Fabian, just so I could zoom this and have a quick look. So here we go. This is the MAG7 sort of um, movement today. Most of the MAG7 names were strong today, especially... Dun, 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 dun. It's the biggest and the baddest of them all. It is King Apple going upside. It is King Nvidia. And what should you do as far as trading is concerned? Oh yeah, keep doing the same thing. Go Apple, go Nvidia, go Google, go Microsoft, go Meta. It's a mag four, mag five, mag seven. What, I don't, how many mags are there? Big time moving to the upside. Meanwhile, where's my friend Morgan Stanley? Uh, here's the banks. Where's Morgan? Oh, no. There's Morgan Stanley down there, down five and a quarter percent. And like I said, all of a sudden, man, all the movements today that happened in crypto, all the movements that happened in the NASDAQ today, the P&L number one today, trade on the floor, on the show. Wow, NVIDIA 906. Let's go on NVIDIA. The number one trade today was taken live right in front of everybody, right in front of whoever was here. This was at two o'clock. So we had everybody with us. We had Sharif, we had Adara, we had Neil, we had Brendo, we had everybody here. We had all of you with us when we put this trade on. And there it goes, it's Morgan Stanley. It's a downside push there as Morgan Stanley drops on a Wall Street report that they are looking into its wealth segment and possible mishandling of client acquisitions, things like that. Go find the report. I'm not here to, to read you uh, the rights here on that. But what I am here to tell you is, uh-oh, and uh-oh again. Call somebody that cares because we just put this name on watch and it was Morgan Stanley down into the downside. I want to thank absolutely everybody that's rocking with me today because this has been a very, very awesome opportunity for me on this market recap show. Couldn't do anything uh, without all of you. So we'll do a market recap, what we just did. Then we'll talk about earnings tomorrow. Then we'll have, again, we'll just keep rolling out the best guests period. We'll have Daniel Shea coming through. She'll talk about options. We already have the plan of action on that one. We're going to talk about Amazon. We're going to talk about Nvidia. What's next? What's the next stock to go? She's got an idea there. We're going to talk about that. But without all of you, we don't have anything. Over 28 hundred right now. Thank you so much for watching. What's up? There's my guy. What's up, Apple Fritter? I've already given you props for that name. No more. Apple and raisin pancake with powdered sugar. What exactly is happening? What's up, Chef Joe? Chef Joe's knows what's cooking up there today. Congratulations, Chef. You were right on 
with NVIDIA. Monster day uh, right there so far. Is Miss Shea in the chat? Oh, hey, yow, there she is. What's up, Danielle? You can join whenever you want. Uh, there it is. Anyways, as we go on today, what was moving around the financials today? FDS. We've got some big reports coming in the next tomorrow and the next couple of days. We start tomorrow with JP Morgan. We start with Wells Fargo. We start with, what else did I write down there? Citigroup. So let's just have a quick look. Look, I'm getting smarter, by the way, every day. I feel like I'm getting not smarter, but my analysis seems to be getting better. So let's give some credit to that. Let's look at the RSI just really quickly. This is something that I've brought into everybody's attention with JP Morgan, okay? Look at this. Hey, how come my Epic Pen always get, okay, I got a JPMQ? No, no, I never looked at that. Uh, okay, um, there we go. We're talking to the to Chilean nightmare over there. Uh, here we go. Look at JP Morgan. Top up here, right? So as you can see, we're forming a little bit of a channel here. But look what's happening down here on the RSI, right? We are heading lower. We are actually starting to diverge now. So as JP Morgan seems to get bumped back up here just a couple days ago into those levels, you can see right away that the RSI is back down in to some of these lows again that we've seen before jump off points. So I feel that if we get a good report here, RSI is about halfway, so at 50 points, that's not a bad spot there for the RSI. Generally, you wanna fade when you're at 80 and buy when you're in and around 30. If we can go back over to the chart, Fabian, uh, just really quickly. So these have been good areas to potentially fade, as you can see up here. The last time we got a little hot, we did pull back. The one thing to acknowledge about JP Morgan, we talked about this yesterday, was look at the distance between the JP Morgan. This is also true of many different names, right? Let's go over quickly. First of all, let's get rid of that and let's go over to the SPY or Qs or anything you want. The 50 period, right? We're getting separated away from this. We are expecting a little bit of a pullback in. So that's happened over the last couple of days. You don't wanna to get too extended away from that 50 period. And that's sort of what's been happening here with the Qs as well as the spiders. So that's given pulls back into these levels. So if we do get a miss for JP Morgan or a miss for Wells Fargo or Citigroup, look at the pullback into the 50 period as potential support zones. JP, oh, let's just look at Wells Fargo. Estimated 109 a year ago, 123. So looking lower. Um, revenue estimate 20.1 billion. Last year at this time, 20.7 billion. So we are looking for lower numbers in some of these names. Even JP Morgan, the number that I have is 418 on the estimate. Last year's EPS 410. Um, revenue estimate 47, 40 billion dollars 78. Last year's 38.3. So JP Morgan looking for higher EPS. Wells Fargo looking for lower as compared to last year. So you gotta do your research. Citigroup the other way around as well. EPS estimate 129. Last year 219 looking lower. Revenue estimates lower for Citigroup as well. So it looks like they're expecting big things from JP Morgan, but it's Citigroup right now that's down that 5% from highs. So, you know, interesting names there in the banking sector. XLF, of course, could be something to look for. A pullback to XLF right now into the 50 period moving average. So we're a couple minutes away from having Danielle on. Let's go over a trade that she hasn't joined yet, no. So a 4.15 generally is when we have the guests. So I know my guy Fabian over there. Let's have a drink of water first of all. Shout out to Hydration Nation. We started at 8.30. Actually, my daughter woke, uh, first of all, my wife and daughter were up this morning at 5.30. I got up at like 6.15. We jumped on the Peloton. We did our thing. We're into work here. But we've been on the air basically since 8.30 all the way till now. Cheers. I lied. I mean, obviously, we have time off in the middle of the day. So uh, there's that. Okay, UNG, a, a, a stock that was talked about by Michael Noss and Bri uh, just Michael, I think, actually, not Chris, not Brian. On Monday, we talked about UNG. UNG touching these um, lows. I don't, honestly, this is called the Widowmaker. Heading into 
potentially easier temperatures now. Spring, it's gorgeous around here right now. I think it's 65 Fahrenheit or so, 18 degrees Celsius hitting in and around Toronto. Uh, generally speaking, and, and I'm not a trader of nat gas, but I don't think the summer is going to be... Look, global warming is a problem, but what it did do, especially around here, we basically had the mildest winter that I can ever remember. Now, don't quote me on that. I don't know if it's going to be the mildest one on record, but I shoveled like twice. And honestly, for a year, and, and what I'm talking about is a couple inches of snow. I ain't talking about like, oh my God, where's the car? Where's my dog type of stuff? I'm talking about like, don't leave your dog out during a snowstorm. By the way, I'm going to ask Danielle Shea. Let's talk about leaving animals outside during snowstorms. I don't think she has any snowstorms over there. But I hope that she's got one of those animals. I'm going to ask her if she's got one of those chickens running around there. Uh, or one of those um, little miniature horses, I believe she wanted. Ponies. UNG downside. What else was red today, guys? We had tan that was red. I mean, some of these interest rate sensitive sectors starting to go the other way. GLD also, wow, what a move happening on gold right now. Um, and actually, I wanted to show something here, um, and that was this. I, there's a tweet that I found here, um, and this was the top. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's retweet this out, because this is pretty interesting here. The top countries, um, let's just go quote this. I'm going to say like this, interesting, uh, like that, Inter, intertesting. Uh, right there about gold. So we'll just do that. We'll have a quick look. These are, and I, we've already looked at this, gold reserves by countries. Germany? Um, all right, so it's USA. First of all, you know what? Like, knock, knock, Fort Knox, anybody home? I don't know if there's any gold in there or not, but right now the USA claims to have the most gold there. Shout out to my paisans in Italy. We're always the best investors. Not, you should see our banking system. Uh, France, Russia right there in China. So I think Russia and China, I've been hearing that they're buying more gold. So I feel like a lot of this recent run up has probably to do with interest from Russia and China again. Because guess what? These are two nations right now that if the United States or anything were to ever happen on a global scale, you saw what happened, unfortunately, to the Israeli shekel when that was happening and still going on with Palestine. Um, we've seen, obviously, the Russian ruble get completely destroyed on tariffs, on, on various... Now, there's been battles back. I'm talking about when they first went into Ukraine. It actually makes sense for some of these central banks or these countries to start buying some gold in case something does wind up happening to their currency. What should have they bought, though, Fabian? Fabian? Bitcoin, Fabian, come on. I mean, you're the Bitcoin bull around here. Look at Bitcoin today. Huge move up. Bitcoin really holding out well, man. I think El Salvador went into Bitcoins, 36, 37,000, something like that. Um, and now you see what's happening right now uh, with BTC, as we can see, up to 70 and looking pretty strong up near the highs for Bitcoin. But uh, no, I'm just kidding around. I don't know if anybody should be putting a whole heck of a lot of money in crypto. I do think now with the space being justified with 13 ETFs, I believe, could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. You now have other alternatives other than opening up wallets that may be hard to understand or you know, getting a Robinhood, a PayPal, whatever account you want. Definitely some of these ETFs justifying the space. All right. Um, yeah, well, Canada's different. There are going to be some major banks there in the United States that do have various things like that. I didn't even say that we are taking questions with Danielle Shea, but they're already coming in. I'll see what kind of, yeah, they're, they're already in. You let me know when she's ready because we're going to bring her on immediately, which apparently is right now. Okay, I'm always in a good mood when Danielle Shea is on. What kind of mood are you in, Miss Danielle Shea? I'm in a great mood. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I mean, wow. I don't know if you expected that today. I mean, you, me and you went back and forth. I was pretty short for a while. I had NVIDIA as my reddest name because I was just like, nope, nope, nope. And it was just saying, yep, yep, yep. And we just kept on going to the high side. I personally, Danielle, did not think that we would be double up what we were down yesterday. I thought the CPI was a little bit more important than this PPI number, but I guess not. 
Man, I have to agree with you, Sean, and I have to tell you, I'm a little annoyed at myself because, you know, I very rarely get short because I follow the trend and I trade relative strength, but I did have two shorts on today. That was not very enjoyable. However, you know, the rest of those relative strength longs, uh, that's what I'm going to continue focusing on here, especially because of the way that we reverse so well off of those lows. What 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 were you short? I mean, I can, um, I'll show you here. Let me show you my NVIDIA trade, which was horrible, uh, by the way. And I'm going to talk about this. One of my biggest issues is being stubborn. So like 885, shout out to my wife, 885 right there, uh, nice downside. I thought that was going to hold. I thought 890 was going to hold until it didn't. I thought 895, 900 was going to hold until it didn't. But thankfully, Danielle, I got out of the way, let this thing close at 907. Was NVIDIA one of the stocks that potentially threw you for a loop today? You know, it wasn't actually NVIDIA because I do normally stick to the upside on NVIDIA just because it has that relative strength. I was trying to short these two um, that just haven't really been doing very well oh, going Apple. into earnings. So you have Apple yeah. that was, you know, about to fall off of a cliff here. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. that one, especially since they've gapped down three quarters in a row after earnings, that one looked like a pretty good shot for a rollover and die. Yep up 4%, so that was not ideal. And then, uh, you know, same thing with Tesla. You have okay. Tesla that's gapped down four times in a row going into earnings. So, you know, I actually didn't take a stop on these. Um, I don't know, sometimes you get some of these rallies after CPI. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can come in and take another entry or not uh, to the short side, because I still think they're relative, relative strength losers here, but I was wrong on these two today. I mean, that's something that I've definitely added to this conversation too, is the RSI. I mean, I don't know. We, even if you look here at the NASDAQ, just for example, come over here, Fabian, just real quick. Um, these are the cues, and I'll get, let Danielle set this up because I know she wants to talk maybe a little bit about Amazon. This 450, we're getting very, very close right now to some of these highs in the NASDAQ, but the RSI has really been sort of trending down basically since February, and that sort of left our market barcoded right now. The one question I have for you, Danielle, is you've had for us before before the put call spread. And I don't know if you're noticing that maybe is getting uh, sort of slanted one way or the other. Um, last time it was heavy, heavily towards the put side and that really gave a good catalyst for the market to shoot up. Is there anything that's catching your eye on that heading into earnings season? Oh, definitely. So, I mean, I love to look at, um, you know, getting long when the put call ratio gets a little bit too extended. And so if we go here and look over at my market internals grid, uh, you know, the put call ratio got pretty high yesterday on an intraday basis. It was up at one. And so that is actually the level that you generally look for bounce. Typically, it needs to be up there for more than just one day, though. So I think that the reversal is pretty swift in this case. But typically, yes, when the put call ratio is up above one, right. um, even on an intraday basis, that's going to be the time where all you need is just a gap up the next day, some sort of reason, some sort of catalyst, and boom, you know, that's when you get those amazing rallies. All right, and we did have that today. So good good look on the put call ratio. All right, you've absolutely nailed some of these names going into earnings for us in the past. So what is the one name? I know we have banks on our mind. I mean, it's open floor to you. What do we want to talk about now heading into later on in the end of the month? We got big tech names. Is there anything that's catching your eye? What are we trying to set up for? So, you know, right now, Microsoft is my number one long. Um, I think oh. that Microsoft, especially now that Amazon has come up and hit a new high, Microsoft hit a new high just a couple of weeks ago and it came back and it was consolidating. Um, this is a stock that almost always rallies going into earnings. And I thought for a little bit, I thought, well, you know, maybe it already made the new high and it's not going to, but with the way that the NASDAQ reversed off of the 50 simple um, and with the incoming volume that we've seen today in Microsoft, we still have squeezes here that are setting up for a consolidation breakout. And we're just within a stone's throw of that previous all time high. So, you know, I'm trading this one. It's also a long stock portfolio holding that I have. I'm targeting 430 at first, but I think we can actually get up into about 435, 440. So, 
That's going to be the number one ticker that I'm trading right now. I mean, Danielle, we're going to get to 430 tomorrow. I mean, honestly, Microsoft yes. today closes 428. I mean, what a monster rally um, in some of these names. I mean, look at even Microsoft off the bottom. It's so funny that we talk about four, like this used to matter. Like remember when like $8 or $10 or $50 was like a big move. Now Nvidia, like if you catch it off the open, you can get a 30 or $40 move. Uh, what has that done to options and the pricing of that? Like, don't you see crazy movements, especially as these stocks continue to get so high in value? Like you must be excited for a split of something like CMG. I wonder if Nvidia splits again. You know, the NVIDIA split, the last split that they had was like my trade that I had of the year. So okay. I think that if NVIDIA uh -oh. announces a split, yeah, come over to my I'll screen. Be so there. happy oh, because stocks, <laughs> yeah, I mean, stocks like this that, um, you know, announce a split, they do typically have a great rally going into the split and then they have a rally afterwards. So, you know, with something like NVIDIA, you know, I, I can see why you were looking to short it. I mean, it was getting pretty frothy, but that reversal today was absolutely Nasty. gorgeous. I and know. I think at this point, now that it's held the lows, it's trading higher, we're seeing incoming volume, we have a squeeze. I think it can trade back up into 950 and then up into 1,000. So, I mean, for me, with something like NVIDIA, you know, I trade options. And so yeah. I'm able to, you know, use a lot less money to trade it, but it still is challenging because the options are expensive. Um, that's why I trade a lot of spreads, but so that's what? also why I've been pointing members toward arm because right. arm has a pretty similar pattern. I think that this one's setting up really well. You have a previous breakaway gap. You've got a squeeze, you have earnings coming up. And stocks like this that had a breakaway gap the previous quarter typically are going to rally going into earnings. And I mean, it's a much cheaper yes, name. Oh, sorry about Danielle. I had to have a makeup, uh, makeup change here. Fabian's like, oh, I got some powder on my face. I like ARM. I mean, you just nailed that one. I think NVIDIA is a little bit tricky to trade because some days NVIDIA leads the way to the downside. It's hard to look. I've been switching over to the SMH, actually. I've been preferring that to trade. ARM May 8th, NVIDIA May 22nd. Um, I think ARM has a great opportunity uh, to make that move back up to the upside. I'm not sure if SoftBank, have you heard anything? Have they been selling anything? I'm not even sure. Um, the flow right now is over a billion shares, but we knew that SoftBank only released like 8% of this or something uh, off the open. And they had that one lockup day. And let me go back over to a daily chart. Do you remember what day that was? Because I don't think it was April, no, March 18th or something like that. We were expecting a big move down here um, on, on that lockup, and it really has held. So I'm liking that 50 period moving average, and I like what you're talking about there with ARM. So, um, okay. Microsoft's the next one. Amazon happened today. Google is absolutely hot fire. I'm going to keep it in the chip. First of all, I have to ask you, can we take some questions from our audience? Of course. We can always. I'll, I'm happy to take questions anytime. All right, Miche, here we go. It's time for what is Neil's favorite pastry. Come over here. It's Mr. Apple Fritter. You like apple fritters, Danielle? Uh, I do like apple fritters, yes. Yeah, they have to be made properly for sure. Here at Tim Hortons, when you come to Toronto, which you are coming here, we're going to go to Tim Hortons. I'm going to spend a dollar fifty. Don't I know? It's you know. Thank me later. And I'm going to get you an apple fritter. Uh, you're going to like that there. All right. Will you talk about AMD into earnings? So that's the question as we, uh, you know, got to get back to get back to the market. AMD earnings is April 30th. So we're just two weeks away from this. It looks to me like we've had about a 20% or so pullback in this name. But guess what, Danielle? We are sitting, on my opinion, at a wicked level here at 162. Looks like we can support that back into the beginning of the year. How is AMD setting up on your charts? Okay, guys. So everybody's asking me about AMD, and I think I have the unpopular opinion here because I do this run into earnings trade every single quarter, and I will tell you that I love AMD. I'm a shareholder, but this thing has kicked me in the teeth because it's incredibly inconsistent going into earnings. So, you know, overall, if you look at the last eight quarters, on average, yes, it does rally about 3.5% in the 21 bar time frame going into earnings. But what you'll notice is that sometimes, for whatever reason, it just completely rolls over and dies going into earnings. Sometimes the moves are great. Sometimes it's a little bit flat. So 
I actually stopped trading this one for the typical rally going into earnings. I think right here, it's also just pretty dicey because it's broken down below the 50 simple. I don't like buying something below the 50 simple. Um, could you try to buy it off of the 100, off of 165? You definitely could, but I'm not going to buy this one because, like I said, it's it's got me a few times and i just prefer to stick with tickers like this that are just a little bit better you know in an upside trend yeah they just make more sense i mean i just highlighted right here as well on my chart um that i'd rather trade a this is the 50 period right there so it actually coincides with this 180 level so i'd rather set see them put up a good report break through here then we'll use that as the jumping spot to get back over 200. So I, I, I think that's a good look there. And there's something to be said about that, right, Danielle, is, is that if you don't have sort of good mojo with a stock, or maybe you potentially haven't been feeling it on the past couple reports and your read is just wrong, to step away from it. So I feel like that was, uh, again, absolutely great advice. Okay, this is, um, this is one that I just saw right now. So I'm gonna say a big shout out to Joe Schmo, and it's about the banks. So Danielle, if you want to, get ready. He liked to know, if there's anything that has a setup right now, which one for, I guess, which options, or sorry, what are your opinions on which bank will potentially do the best? I, it doesn't have to be JPM, Citigroup, or Wells Fargo, but Goldman Sachs or any of the major banks, have you had a chance to look at them? I'm sure you've been getting questions about this as we're starting tomorrow. What name, and again, looks like it may set up the best for a potential beat and hopefully raise. So, I mean, honestly, for me, like, I know it's kind of a little cliche to pick JP Morgan, but that's the one that I always pick. And the reason why is it's consistent. If you look at the last four quarters, it's gapped up four quarters in a row. It's in this nice trend. It's pulled back to the 21 EMA. Um, I, I just find JP Morgan to be the most consistent out of the bank. So if I'm going to trade a bank, it's going to be JP Morgan. If you look at Goldman Sachs, I mean, you know, half the time over the last eight quarters, it, a little bit more than half the time. Yes, it has traded higher, but it's also traded lower and the trend isn't as strong as JP Morgan. So um, that's right. why that one I don't generally focus on. Um, Wells Fargo, it does look pretty good right here, but I still think that for a significant portion of the last two years, it was basically just chopping around. So that's why I always stick with JP Morgan Chase. And ideally, they have a good report, they gap up, and it will continue to cause the, the market to rally into next week. Yeah, I like JP Morgan uh, at those levels. I just say you trade the best names and stick with them. And then, hey, maybe they'll lead this bank rally higher. Um, another question we keep getting, people are loving the shirt. They're loving all that. But you know what they're saying? They're saying, where can I get one? Where can we get one? But until I get one, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can promote this. Are you guys selling those shirts? Is there any interest uh, on that swag? Okay, so Simpler Trading just gave this to me because I work there and I've been trying to get you one and they said, oh, we don't have any. So I'm going to make a special eh? order for one okay. just for you. I appreciate that. But you also know what? Yep. What? No, go ahead, go ahead. But since there's been so much interest in the Trader merch, I thought to myself, you know what? I should just make an Etsy store. So now I'm thinking about making my own Etsy store. So whatever hilarious and inappropriate trading statement you want, you know, just type it in the chat and maybe I'll put it on a shirt. You know, for how long I've been trying to get merch running around here and now you're just going to open up an Etsy store. I love it though. Um, shout out to Miss Danielle Shea. Um, but yeah, let's get those hoodies going uh, as well. I forget what I was going to say actually, but it was something pretty funny. I'll see if I can remember it uh, coming up pretty soon. But yeah, great, great hoodie right there. Oh, how's the, how's the farm going? You got anything uh, back there? I meant to ask you that. Okay, so I haven't bought any animals yet because I've been just dealing with a lot of things okay. with the new house, you know, just yep, yep. things that have got to be done. But I will tell you guys that I was hanging out in my laundry room the other day yeah. and a full-size turkey just oh, wow. showed up wow, in wow. my backyard. So that's good. So you kind of have like, you know, some uh, squawkers there hanging out, uh, chilling out there, but no fig tree yet, nothing yet. So we'll, we'll hold out for hope that that eventually does come through. Okay. I don't need to keep people calling you the entrepreneur of the year, by the way. Another thing that you've been building very impressively as well, by the way, Danielle, is your YouTube page. So traders can not only find you at Trader Danielle, 
You see what I'm doing here, Danielle? But we can also find you on your YouTube page. So if you're ready, we can show that. You can describe maybe what one of your past videos are. I see on these videos you have three different hairstyles as well. Well done. Well, you know, I'm trying to make it a little bit interesting, change it up every now and again. All right, all right. So. <laughs> so what's your, la what's yeah. your latest video? So, you know, I pulled together all the videos that I've made over the years. I never had my own channel until recently. So I've got tons of videos in here about options, butterflies, all kinds of stuff. But the most late, the latest series that I just started is the trade review series because people are always asking me about my trades. And yeah. so all these pink videos, um, I've just basically been making videos that explain, hey, this is why I got in the trade. This is how much money I made. This is why I got out. And here's the setup if you want to try to trade it again next time. Perfect. We absolutely love that. And oh, I remember what I was going to say, Danielle, is, is that if the only way to get one of those hoodies is that you have to work with Simpler Trading, I'll sign a one-day contract. We'll go over there. You know, be part of like the agreement. You know how like when players retire and they come back and they just sign the one day so they can go tip the cap. But shout out to Chris Brecher as well over there at Simpler Trading. So Danielle, once again, best of luck uh, with all of your trading. Thank you so much for joining me once again on the Market Recap Show. Anything you want to leave our viewers? You know, I'm just looking forward to seeing you guys next week and the rest of this month. I think there's going to be a lot of volatility, a lot of action. I'm personally pleasantly surprised that the market bounced so well today. And I think it bodes well for the next couple of weeks going into tech earnings. The one thing um, I'm not letting you go yet because I forgot something. Come over to the chat right here quickly, Fabian. This is my bad, Ian. I was talking all day because you and I had messaged, we're gonna talk about Amazon just for one minute, Danielle, because I know you gotta go and I gotta go as well. But we were gonna talk a little bit about Amazon. Um, what a big move they've had here, breaking out. If you look at the weekly, the thing about Amazon, and there you go, guys, I've got you, I've got you guys. So there it is right there. Uh, my bad, and thank you for bringing it up again. Like, Ian Zorniak, like, you promised, like, that, you know, pulling out my heartstrings right there, Ian. Come on, man. Uh, but there it is right there. Look at Amazon. How beautiful is this? It kind of just is like, wow, we're getting ready to take out this all-time high in and around 189. And in fact, today, we did make a brand new all-time high on Amazon. So what are we looking at? Like, how perfect is this? Just... Boom, V'd it up right back there, right back up to the upside right here, bouncing so wickedly off that 50 period, starting to go back up to the upside. What's up with Amazon? Any uh, future looks for this name? Yeah, so I mean, Amazon looks great. I was trading Amazon this week. That was actually the last video that I made on my YouTube channel. Um, and, you, you know, I think that ultimately it's going to trade up into 220, probably even up into 250 on a longer term basis. If you look at a weekly chart and throw some Fibonacci levels on there, um, you know, I think the stock is looking great. There's a lot of good upside potential. I mean, the way that it shifted off of the lows, uh, earnings have been really good. So this was one of the stocks that I was buying uh, quite a bit of last year. And, you know, at this point, it's kind of seems a little late to buy more at the new high, obviously. Yeah. But um, I think especially now that it's made a new high, we can keep just keep trading that momentum. Hey, we love trend. Trend is definitely your friend. And I'm glad that you are also, hopefully, a friend of mine as well. Thank you so much, Danielle Shea, for coming through. She's in the chat. Uh, maybe stay there for a couple minutes if you, if you have a second. Um, lots of people subbing to your channel and everything. So great. I'm so happy for that. So thank you, Ms. Danielle Shea. Um, we'll see you back next week if all is well. And good luck on all of your positions and all the trades that you have on. It's Ms. Danielle Shea. Thank you. Ciao, Thank that you. was Trader Talk. Man, we put in the hours, but you know the good thing about this is, is traders stay late. That's the hashtag that we've been talking about. And there we got another one right there. Very professional. Thank you, uh, Miss Danielle Schaefer, always uh, coming up and, and, and providing new ideas, explaining things. And again, how awesome is that, that that YouTube page easily just showing you guys, you know, where she's getting in, why, the profits, the ins, the outs, Awesome, thank you so much, uh, Danielle. We've all learned a lot from you. But the one thing that I learn is I don't do any of this without you, it's roll call. That's right, I always say that because you know what? A couple times, a couple, um, we, we had some people working for us a while ago and they're always like, damn, Daniel. But you know what, I should be like, damn, Danielle. Uh, there it is right there, what's up, Juan? Good point right there. But without everybody watching, 
We don't have anything, so let's go. It's roll call. Who's the traders that are staying late with your boy right now? Oh, it's Miss Danielle Shea. What's up, Danielle? Uh, what's up? Andrew's here as well. Bears vs. Bullets is here. Pop and Shorts is here. Put your ones up in the chat if you want me to say hi. Put your ones up for Danielle Shea. Let's let everybody know that we love this show. There's some highs. What's up, Andrew Chow? Caputi. Terrible, triple trader. Uh-oh, here we go. D DJ Marshall. We're going to start getting pumped up right now. What's up, Christopher Holcomb? There's Ver Bears vs. Bulls. Hey, he's the first one there. Huge. Oh, you almost got me there, Hugh. You almost got me. Uh, what's up, Bright Awakening? AV is here as well. Danielle, say my name. Say my name. Says Kind Ready is there as well. Mike Breeze with the hearts. Big ups. Oh, no. Now the ones are coming in. What have we done? Shout out to Ian. Shout out to... Okay, I can't keep up. Shout out to Craig. Shout out to Jose. Shout out to Art King. Uh, shout out to Michelle Meir. What's up, Michelle? What's up to Darwin? Oh, oh. Now we're getting... Yo, what's up? Donnie Zimbabwe is here. Um, NVIDIA Reversal 905. Check me tomorrow, Donnie Zimbabwe. I'll have some more answers for you. Oh, a bunch of ones. What's up, Bright Awakening? Caputi and all of that. That's it for Roll Call. Thank you so much to everybody. That was absolutely fantastic. Traders stay late and you did that with me and that means a heck of a lot look that's a good point tomorrow's trade sometimes we talk about tomorrow's trade today that ms trade though we never know where these trades are coming from the one thing i want to tell everybody about how i trade okay morgan stanley let's go look at this short i should show this to danielle you know, trying to suck up, you know, short of these trades. Uh, there it is. Look at this move down. Not only do we break the day's low, that was sort of what got me excited, but what got me over to the name was something that was pretty simple. Our, this show, by the way, don't know if I said this yet, sponsored by Benzinga Pro. Pick up your Benzinga Pro platform. ASAP. Um, all right. So here it is right here. Morgan Stanley shares are trading lower following a report that their wealth uh, management arm has been probed by federal regulators. Well, we had that live for you on the show. This is the thing. When we took this trade right here, it was going against us. But then, boom, goes the dynamite. We took the shares. My stop was 91. We we're going to give it back to this base or this support level. We got short. Our average price was about 90 quarters, something like that. So 75 cents worth of risk to the maximum spot at the high side. And then we went all the way down. And this was a wicked, wicked trade for sure. Move this out of the way, Epic Pen. Once we stopped there at 87.50, we got out there like, why not, man? 250 in the money. Then we put our stop at the bottom of the day, 86. And man, oh man, did that come in. There we go. Thank you so much for saying that, that this should possibly be framed on a wall. What's up, AV, man? Yeah, that looks pretty sweet right there, doesn't it? Just wish we didn't have so many outs there. But again, bouncing off 90, that was a key level. Then we just kept on falling down. It is your P&L number one. Look, I can't do this without everybody. Can't do this without our guests. Thank you, Miss Danielle Shea from Simpler Trading. Go make sure you find her. YouTube, Twitter. We're streaming on Twitch. We're streaming on X. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're basically every single place that you can find streaming, except for Rumble. I think we're going to do that soon. Join me tomorrow at 8.30 when guess what? I do it all over again, but tomorrow it's a podcast. So we'll get to that podcast. No market recap show tomorrow, but I'm here at 8.30 where I will address Donnie Zimbabwe, that 905 NVIDIA. Your boy will probably be short. I'll see everybody tomorrow. It was a green day, but talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.